move one. Boom! And welcome to the Big Honker Podcast brought to you by Pacific Game Calls. I'm Jeff Stanfield with the world-famous Andy Shaver. BHP25, that's the promo code there. Turkey season's here for a lot of people. Uh, so if you need new turkey calls, new duck calls, goose calls for the coming season, use a promo code, please. And before we get on to it, Pet CBD by Hemp Hill Farms. I'm telling you right now, if you got a dog and he does any kind of working dog, even if he's a lazy bastard and all he does is lick his nuts all day long, you need to get Pet CBD for him. I'm telling you, that's the way to go. Are you there? Yep. Make licking the nuts easier. Yep. Could you imagine the back eight you have if you licked your own nuts, Jeff? Well, I got a tire around my belly, so I'm not going to be able to reach mine. I can you, just barely see mine sometimes. You'd pull so. everything in your whole body if you tried to lick your nuts. Yeah, I would. The problem the was, time. if I could do that, I don't know if I'd ever leave the house. <laughs> could you imagine the lack of production? You think nobody gets shit done now with fucking iPhones? You imagine yeah. being able to lick your own balls. Thought, nobody would ever leave the house. I thought Netflix was bad. You yeah. get a bunch of people that can lick their own nuts. and <laughs> Production's going to drop. That's somebody's got a muscled up neck. Yeah, he said something licks the balls all day long. <laughs> With us today from... Not how you thought we were going to start this episode, was it, Brian? Uh, With yeah. bull and briar leather, Mr. Brian Wynn. Brian, how are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are y'all? Good. Y'all guys made it from uh, Nashville, okay? Made it home? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a uh, that was an experience. Our first time there. So That was a busy uh, show. It was. It was. We got in... Um, Found out we got in, ramped up a little production, and it was a good good time. Good that, time. That's one of the that's shows. the best show in America that I, I think right now of of any yep. outdoor show. Now I'm going to tell you about another show that I just found out about yesterday. We're talking about the Texas Trophy Hunters and Safari Club International. The Dallas Safari Club left to go to Atlanta. They're not getting a lot of takers, I don't think. But now the Texas Trophy Hunters and Safari Club are going to have a show in Dallas. That would be a really good show for you because that's a high-end crowd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, I, I've, we're, we're trying to expand our shows, definitely. We, uh, we do, uh, we've done a few shows in Dallas. Texas, we're growing in the Texas strong. The, the, our, you know, it's handmade. So, you know, there's a lot of handmade that comes out of Mexico. So it's really, it's a tougher market in Texas um, because of the cheaper labor um, in South Texas. But um, our stuff's unique. You know, we, we do it. Um, it's a lot. Our The craftsmanship, I'm not saying they can't do it, but the amount of labor hours it takes to make one of our belts is a lot longer than anything I'm seeing coming out of Mexico. So why is that just more pride put in it or what why does it take longer yeah well no because you know we take leather we split it in two um and belts is we belts is what made our start but our main you know is our main bread and butter but we do other things but so we split uh take a cow hide uh we buy wicked and craig or a harmon oak and we we level it split it by hand and then you know split the belt and then level the belt into two 10 ounce pieces wrap the snake around it and where most of your uh, alligator and rattlesnake belts they just glue it to the top of it stitch it and then let it rip and they're done with it so it, it takes hours of labor to do it right but we've got farmers and plantation and guides and cowboys that wear our stuff here in georgia alabama where we've been you know since the 80s and they wear a rattlesnake belt for five to ten years you know where it's just not, you know, so that's kind of where we got started. And then we started doing a lot of alligator and bought the equipment to work with alligator and then just kind of kept growing it. So is the equipment that you would use for a snake belt, it's different than what you would use for an alligator belt? Yeah, you have to use a splitter um, on alligator. So alligator's chrome tan, most of it. And it's a softer leather after it's tan because the alligator has a scale structure on it like a fingernail. So it has to soak in a lime a lime bath and the process of tanning it is uh pretty pretty in depth so um when it gets done it's chrome tan we we don't tan alligator but it's a soft leather so you can't split it with a regular uh, cow machine that you would split cow leather with you have to put it in a uh we have a kamaga splitter um we have another brand. It's made in Italy. I can't remember. We both are, but they're uh, they're pretty pricey, man. One of my machines is two hundred thousand, and Ooh. the other one, 
So that that's the reason alligator number one it goes from five to fifty dollars a centimeter Damn. price, and then you add the equipment to do it right. Then now you're getting up where you're paying two hundred to three thousand bucks for a good belt. Wow, oh, they're a fucker. So, now an alligator hides real thick. A snake's is not right. Right, right. So we we tan our own snake in house. So we tan um around. Uh, anywhere from probably depending on nature, you know, whatever God gives us as far as snakes. Um, but we get snakes from Texas, Oklahoma, wherever it's legal, we get it. We tan it for us. We sell all our bigger skins to cowboy boot companies and shoe, shoemakers. Oh, really? And, yep. So about any, I, I wouldn't say any, but I would say 80 to 90% of rattlesnake you see on boots come from us. If you're, you know, anywhere in the country. Wow. So, so are you yeah. not, this is a stupid question. Are there actual rattlesnake farms like they're all other, all, all kinds? Like, I know there's alligator farms. Are there? Not that I know of. So, so these rattlesnake. Are all wild caught. Yeah, these are all nuisance, nuisance first, nuisance first. And then there is in a season, essentially, you can call it in Texas and Oklahoma where they, you know, have, Tech, there, there's areas in Georgia, it just depends on kind of where you're at, but in Georgia where uh, there's no really no law on venomous snakes. But we have so much pines and green that, I mean, like on our on our farm, um, on my family's in-law's farm, we could, you would never know even mowing if there was an eastern diamondback or cane break there. I mean, it's not like you can just find them. Really? Um, it's, it's, you know, it's so... Uh, they just blend in where in Texas and Oklahoma, there's areas that is eat up with them. If they didn't have a season, I mean, I go to some of these ranches and farms in Texas uh, buying and it is, I mean, they've got chicken wire around their kids playground, mm -hmm. you know, just to keep the snakes out of it. I mean, there's that many. So, um, yeah, but the Springs, when we get them like right now, out out in Texas, uh, Oklahoma, that, those areas, they'll lay outside of the dens. And most of the guys I know are really, you know, they are only picking up over three foot. If it's under three foot, they leave it. Mm. Um, you know, just kind of like deer or ducks or anything. You got to you gotta take some and you know have some common sense about it but uh so yeah are you on the, are you in the market to buy snakes like if someone out there the reason why i asked a kid texted or called me yesterday it's got a house about 10 miles from here and he was listening to our podcast with the snake guys of which way it's wet south of here so it's not anything that we hunt no none, none that we turkey hunt no we're not okay. turkey hunting. Okay, right. anyways his, 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 yeah. his dad found a den yesterday Oh, with a dad. bunch of snakes there. I bet I found he, a rattlesnake den this morning. And he called and he said, listen, he said, hey, do you, uh, those guys from Nathan and them, he said, do you mind if I get their number? I said, no, that's what they do. Right. So if someone like Andy decided he wanted to go get a bunch of rattlesnakes. He doesn't. Would you be Andy. in the market to buy rattlesnakes from somebody? Yeah, yeah. So I got, I got, I've got uh, two guys in Texas that have license that I buy from. Um, what they do is they'll come out and buy them uh, by the pound. Uh, so what they could do is they catch them live or or catch them, kill them, and freeze them. So um, we pay um, – I pay anywhere from – I buy it by the inch. Mm -hmm. So I only get the, the skin here. I, I don't care anything about the meat. I buy the skin and the rattles here. Um, and then the meat, they can do whatever they want to with it. Um, my guys that I use in Texas and Oklahoma, which if, if somebody calls me and wants them, then I'll hook them up with them, or they can skin them and ship me the hides. I pay anywhere from sixty cent to um, to around eighty to ninety cent an inch, depending on how they grade out. How do you how do you grade out a rattlesnake hide? So, like, if the diamonds, you know, snakes are just like any other animals or humans. You know, they some of them are mean as hell and getting fist fights, oh. and they've got scars and. They done got beat on by a golf club by some old woman in the backyard and made it. And, you know, it's uh, so so if, if they're pretty good hides, um, but we take them and most guys that ship them to me salted or frozen. Get in the summer, you can't really ship them. Or I've got like those two, two guys I use out in Texas, Oklahoma uh, that run around and they'll come and buy them alive and kill them and 
that way. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we take them, we get them, as long as it's legal yeah. from a legal state. Um, you know, in Georgia, I, I'm just a leather worker, so I'm not into the laws of every state. So I really like using my two buyers because they, they handle all that, and I'm just getting the leather. Right. They, they will pick it for me, and when I get it here, it's, it's a considered garment. It's uh, it's just uh, it's done been pickled, which is vinegar, water, and salt is the way we pick them, and then they just dry them, so you need to cade them. Well, but what does a like a, a four foot long rattlesnake? What's that going to be worth? Is that forty eight <laughs> inches? Is that worth fifty so bucks or the most? The most I probably would pay for it. Oh, we can do a little beer math here. Um, you're looking at around forty eight forty eight inches times just say seventy eight. Look at about thirty seven bucks. bucks. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'll give you two to four bucks for the rattle. What do you do with the rattles? Um, so we've got a lot of. Uh, I've got the Chinese love them. Really? I don't know what they do with them. Uh, I've got four or five. I, they're American, but they're uh, they're. I mean, they're from China. Um, they buy as many as I can send to them. No shit. I mean, uh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And now we're not making a killing off of right. them, you know, but we have to. So when we get a rattle in, we'll bowl it and then uh, air dry it and then clean the fat out of it. So there's, you know, a little labor into it. Um, but they use them for, I, I don't really know what they use them for, uh, but they use them. What's the biggest rattle that you've seen come through your shop? Um, We've had some that was, uh, shoot, 14 to 18, Damn. Uh, 20. 20 probably i haven't really counted we've had some 20 buttons 20 plus the biggest snake i've had was the eastern diamondback hide uh it was eight foot two inches wow Ooh. but its head was the size of a tennis ball <laughs> yeah you know um i i've just from being around this for years it, it, you know you talk to uh i talked to different you know, people at colleges at LSU and UGA and UT and all over the state or the country that study snakes. And, you know, I know there's a, a lot of them are studying them in captivity, but man, I have seen some snakes in South Texas that it stays warm um, more year round. And the amount of babies they have is nothing takes. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some, dude, they all, you know, because. They'll kill them during season, but they'll be, I mean, anywhere from 13 to 40 egg sacks in Ooh. there. And you just imagine if there's 100 acres and you've got five and they have 10 to 50 or 30 mm -hmm. each and hawks get 10% and then maybe fox get a few or whatever, but just half of them Ugh. make it. it it's it's tons You're of talking to two guys that hate snakes. I don't know if there's a rattlesnake season here. There's not a season. But if I see one, I'm killing it out of season. Yeah, they're open season. I'm just I'm just throwing that out there right now. Fucking law can come after me right now. If I see a snake, I don't give a shit. 365, that son of a bitch is open. Now, yeah. I ain't trapping them and well, selling them, but. Yeah. Yeah, I've had, you know, a lot of your animal rights. It's a, there's, there's areas. Here, there's areas that there isn't any. There should be. We we're hunters and farm you know we have we call where we hunt a farm and if i'm out mowing or my brother-in-law or you know family's out doing work and i'm you know <laughs> I'm on a thousand acres in the middle of the pines cutting uh you know we cross hatch it for quail hunting and i see a big eastern diamondback i'm not gonna fool with him i'll just be honest with you uh if he but now if he's up around the house where we stay when we're over there or by my dog kennel or he's hanging out around a deer stand and I've seen him or he's close to a field where we're picking produce, you know, a buddy of mine's farming. Uh, he's got to go or she, you know, they, they've got to go. But I, I think there's some common here. We had hurricane Michael and uh, a few years back, it was 2018, I think. And we got a surge in snakes from the deadfalls that I have never seen before. I mean, I the amount of one foot to three foot snakes that these guys in the woods were killing, and it was because the rabbits and mice and all was thriving in these trees that fell during Michael. But then on the flip side, when the, all these farmers took the time to clean up woods and turn it into row crop, now it's reversed. 
we've got areas that's under, you know, there's just not any. And I'll tell guys on some of these plantations, when I'll be like, hey, you know, don't kill them to bring them to me to make a belt. We, we you know, we sell alligator belts. We sell bison belts. You know, I try to use some common. I'm a, you know, I know God made everything for a reason, even if we don't like it. Yeah. Uh, if we're scared of it. So, but yeah, Hurricane Michael was an interesting thing. I may not ever get to see something like that again as far as how it affected nature. Um, it, it had some huge effects on nature. Great for wild quail. Awesome for wild quail. Uh, Just because it cleared out a bunch of area? Yeah, it opened up so natural light would get down. Um, and then your natural grasses come back on a lot of these places. You couldn't have paid to do what Michael did for the environment. Now, I will say, like our farm, my, my in-laws lost probably 40 to 80 percent of you know any profit they would get off pine trees and uh, oak bottoms through the storm but on the flip side we've got birds in areas we never had birds yeah. uh, we're all big quail hunters um e- even down in the bottoms where we wood duck hunt, it's it's open in there now um it, a lot of those oaks have rotted and um you know it, it's dry during the summer and there's oaks uh, you know your acorns and then in the and then in the winter you hope you get a big rain and it fills up and uh, uh you just go hunt the x you know and there's just acorns floating thousands of them everywhere and, and before you couldn't even get in there so it, it, there was some huge pluses to it but downsides do you, do you uh you said you quail hunt do you plantation style quail hunt do y'all use the mules and the yeah. no no so um no, well, some of my friends do. Uh, a lot of the plantations that surround us, um, but on ours, I hunt with you know walking dogs. So, you know, we we hunt wild birds, and we're we're a part of the southern plantation chain. Um, you know, if you look, there's those old school maps. Um, you know, but no, I I just turn my two. I take two dogs at a time, turn them loose, and we we beat feet. We walk. I like and um, that that's the way I like to hunt. You know, I, I'm not a horse guy and uh the damn horses buck me off and you can't you can't ride a uh you know a, you can't ride a, a buggy and wild bird hunt effectively in my opinion. I mean I know thousands of people do, but most ninety percent of people don't realize they're hunting pin raised birds either. Right. I mean, they think they're hunting wild birds, but they ain't wild birds. I, uh, I would love um, to know the history. I need to read up on that. That would interest me. I'm going to talk to Douglas Spells because he did something on that. But I would like to know the history of the buggy plantation style hunting and how all that went about. And I'd like to know really how far back goes. Does it go pre-Civil War or was that an after-Civil War deal? So Thomasville, to me, used to be dubbed the quail capital of the United States. Um we're in the Red Hill. So what, what it was originally here is the train stopped in Thomasville coming from Chicago up north. And the rich people figured out there was quail here in the 18, early 1800s. So my family's been here since mid-1700s. And um, my great, great, I don't know how many greats back, was a tax, one of the first tax collectors. It really wasn't even a county then. But the railroad stopped. So they bought you know, uh, uh, you know, it started just hunting plants. They call them plantations. They get a bad, bad vibe nowadays with that name, but it's, it's always been hunting plantations. Not that they didn't do a little ag, but so they, I think it was just a way of getting around in the woods. Uh, you know, they had somebody to drive the buggy and now we use cockers uh, to do flushing. But back then they, you know, you had your big English pointer and setter was all you had. And, and red red setters, they call them now. Uh, Irish setters, they hunted a lot back then. I, I would look in like Pebble Hill, different plantations. I've got a friend that bought a uh, Heinz Hill plantation, which is a really old one. And it's some of the old photos and all. But yeah, they just had a mule drawn buggy and just their Jeep for the time is is what I think. Uh, that makes sense. What what? How they many, still do it. How, yeah, I knew, I knew they did. They did big hunt. What is consi- How big does it have to be to be considered a plantation? I'm not exactly sure. I mean, our my in-laws, my wife's family's place is 900 to 1,000 acres. 
I'm not really sure. I mean, there's some that are even a little smaller, like 500 acres, uh, and it's still in that plantation map. But And then there's some that are huge down here that are 10 to, I mean, uh, Pineland is, I think, uh, 20 to 30,000 acres. Um, so I, I'm not sure. They're, they're, they're all over the chart, but I don't know of any much smaller than 800 to 1,000. That, that's always interesting. I like history a lot, and that just uh, – them big old beautiful homes. But, you know, and the plantation word gets a bad vibe these days. But if you go to the eastern shore of Maryland, a lot of those homes are plantation-style homes. Yeah, yeah. No, it's awesome. So I buy – I know most of the plantation owners here because I've been here. My family's been here forever. So I, I get to go on on that reason. And I also go on on buying snakes and, uh, you know, or just a lot of those guys are my customers. And just to go visit and get to see the woodworking and, and the way they uh, built these houses and even the tenant houses, they've kept, most of them have been kept up and uh, redone with like modern, you know, electrical and pecs and, and all just to go in those and see the old heart pine floors and uh they're nice it's it's an awesome you know a, a lot of my friends are dog trainers and they stay in what's the old tenant houses it's been remodeled and they're they're very it's cool man it's a it's a cool history still the old hand well pumps out front um uh, some of them still work uh dude it's still exactly the same they just have updated them some. They're, they said, I, I just looked it up, 500 to 1,000 acres is considered as a common definition of what's constituted as a plantation. And it usually usually had a th of land and produced one or two cash crops for sale. So timber, cotton, whatever, sorghum, whatever they planted, wheat back then, that was what was considered a plantation. Yeah, and them old, them old homes are absolutely beautiful, just like they are when you go to the Boston where the brownstones are. All them, anytime you get around old architecture, it's amazing. There's so much craftsmanship, and so many people took pride in what they did compared to today's crafts. Usually, oh, for sure. I mean, you can't you can't replicate some of these places. I mean, you couldn't build them now. I mean, even the richest people would have trouble getting the labor to build these places now. I go to one, uh, I'm not going to say the name of it because I don't know the owner would like me to say it, but it's a two mile stacked stone pebble driveway wow. put in two miles. So you're leaving Pave Road two miles down, and they had that imported in from somewhere up north. I mean, this happened back in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. This is not, you know, now that now it wasn't done now to do that now. I mean, it was it's crazy. Um, uh, and then they've got a one mile horse track behind it that's uh, hedged because the family loves horse racing and horse raising horses. And to go out there and just uh, I've got to hunt on it, uh, plant, you know, quail hunt on it. It's awesome. It's a good time. Could you imagine trying to build the Biltmore today? No, <laughs> uh -uh. no, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, um, and most of these places are five to 40 cubbies an hour you find on them wow we see i mean it's it's a barn i mean you're not, not on ours it's not there yet but a lot of them are you know you're picking up your dead birds your cockers bringing them back and you're on point again we have no we have no wild i, I say that i've seen two or three little cubbies around the lodge but compared to what we had 30 40 years ago we don't have quail in texas and southern oklahoma like we did even 15 years ago there just is no birds yeah. because I would, we would, uh, on a good year, I used to have a group of guys from Georgia that would call me every year and they'd want a day hunt on me every year, just a quail hunt. And it was after deer season. So I would, I would I'd have a couple places to go the last three years that they've called me, which has been five to 10 years ago. I told the guy, I said, don't waste your time driving out here. We don't have any birds. You know, and it's always like we just want to run our dogs. Well, if you just want to run your dogs, hell, we can do the <laughs> I, shit all day long. I got long. a place for you. You know, I'm not. It's gonna cost you, but then you ain't gonna shoot nothing. I'm telling you, if you want to run your dogs and have a chance to shoot some quail, you need to go somewhere else. And they're always like, "Well, where do we go?" I don't know. You know, you're leaving Georgia. When does y'all season close on quail hunting? Um. Well, it's you know really when the snakes. So October through like January, I think is the season, but. The plantations get to hunt from October through April. See, our, our um, quilt season here. goes through the end of February. But I, yeah. this is what I can figure out from the guys. They're really super nice guys. They have a little bit of money, 
but they don't have quail hunting plantation money in Georgia. So they're leaving Georgia to go somewhere where it's more affordable for them. Well, and that's with us. I mean, I couldn't go, I couldn't afford to pay on these, most of these plantations that have wild birds, like the five to 40 coveys a day, you're going to pay eight to $10,000 a day to hunt on those. Yeah. Those guys don't have that kind of cash. Where, where you could go to a pin raised bird and it's 200 to $500 a day, a person, a thousand, some of them. Now that's pin raised bird. If you go to a true horse or mule drawn buggy place, it's, but you got to look, man. The last time I was talking to a guy, it was 1600 to $2,800 per wild quail kill just to manage it. That ain't buying the land. That ain't the lodge. That ain't the food. So you go out and kill eight birds or 12, I mean, they've got a do their we feed every twenty one days. I can only imagine some of these bigger farms. They're feeding, you know, twenty thousand acres every twenty one days. They feed every road with corn and peanuts and I mean corn and sorghum and uh, and you know, brown top millet. They they spread it real lightly. So it, it's expensive. Um, you know, just to, it, they really don't do it for money. I mean, it's more or less so I reckon they do it for money. Yeah, I, you know, if you do get to hunt on one, it's more of a like, hey, give me eight, ten grand, you can hunt for a week. But if you don't come, I don't care right. on the really nice ones. Yeah, are um, are oak trees a pain in the ass? Because I recently went. We had Easter at my uh, wife's family, a different town, so we we traveled a little bit. But they have, I think, three or four oak trees on their property. And they were talking about how big of a pain in the ass they are. The leaves are everywhere. And I mean, they're just not good trees for here. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want them close to my house. And a lot of these places have gotten rid of it because you can't, there's no habitat under them for birds, you know, if you're, it's true quail, but I, I like them on the farm. I mean, my father-in-law, uh, he was really big. I mean, if, you know, if God put it there, it's there for a reason, but you go in a lot of these places and they're all cut down. They cut all their oak bottoms, but yeah, you don't want them definitely around your house i mean it's shit it's you it's maintenance all the time yeah well they're right next to their house and they're like this it's ridiculous we're always tree trimming and the leaves are awful and we went to uh i think it's called oak alley plantation in louisiana and it was gorgeous like the whole the whole property had these big beautiful oak trees and i was like fuck if i could ever afford it i'd like to have some big oak trees on my property but yeah i'm not, 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 not um, talking to these people <laughs> they, they live forever right here in County. do what they, they come in and they wanted a road that was oak covered and they had uh, the trees dug up around and transplanted to create that road. I think it's one mile of oak covered roads that was planted like three years ago. Really? Yeah. So they got in special huge machines that would uproot all the tap roots and then dug the holes and planted the entire I, I've, I know, yeah, I've, I don't know who owns that place, but I've, I've rode through it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. What, uh, so a cop here goes down and rips half of them down. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how far is the actual Thomasville tree from your office? The big famous tree. Uh, oh my God. We joke about that. Oh man. From right here where I'm sitting is 21 miles from my house. Uh, it's four miles. It's right by our church. I go to First Baptist Church, Thomasville. So it's right there by, uh, yeah, it's, we laugh because everybody takes a picture by it and we're like, look at it. What in the hell is a tree, you know, but we'll be going into town to go eat or go to church and there'll be this, these people standing out by a daggone tree getting selfies. And we're like, it, it's hilarious to us. That's when I go to, when I, I haven't been to the Alamo in years, but the last couple of times I was at Alamo. I was more interested in the damn oak trees that's outside. They've got some huge trees that are hundreds of years old, has, has to be. And they've got anchors built on the ground to keep their the limbs are so heavy so they don't snap off. To us, we see it all the time. Yeah. Like That tree is small compared to us riding through the farm. You know, I, I wouldn't say small because it is a big tree, but we see it hundreds of them. So to all us locals, we laugh at everybody that comes to town that's taking pictures by it because they're like, Dude, I can show you 500 of those. <laughs> I think this the, tree dates yeah. back to 16, 1680, the tree in Thomasville. I just looked it up. The big oak. Yeah, it's, it's, it's big. Um, yeah, man, that's uh, it's a cool. I, I love Thomasville. Uh, 
it's it's a we've kept our downtown thriving. We're opening a store uh, downtown. Our first brick and mortar opened this summer. So we're in one of the older spots. It's got some hundred year old cabinets in it. Um, wow. We're going to put some small, a little, little bit of uh, manufacturing. I wouldn't even call it manufacturing, more assembly there. Um, but so, you know, and then we're, we're bringing in some new things. We're learning some hat shaping, steaming, some Texas vibes in the South Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, man, excited. What, uh, there was something else I was going to bring up. I can't remember what it was. You know where the biggest tree in Texas is? No. Rockport. It's a thousand year old oak. Not how the uh, I guess a tree. Well, I don't yet. fucking know. I'm not a tree scientist. I just looked it up because I'd been to it before. But it's the, it's a thousand years old. It's the oldest tree in Texas. All the fucking hurricanes that shit went through on the Texas coast. It's pretty amazing that it survived. Well, we were at the uh, Bats Classic in Tulsa, and uh, one of the girls from Boss, deathly, deathly, deathly afraid of storms, and we're taught Saturday. So the show was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday they were supposed to have really bad storms there, kind of in Tulsa. And uh, the Indian legend is, is that there's a tree somewhere in Tulsa and it wards off all the tornadoes. That's why Tulsa's never been hit by a tornado, I guess. So we were like, see there, it's no big deal. You got this fucking tree of yeah. protection here. You're fine. Tornado will go around yeah. you. Just get next to that tree. Yeah. No storms. You're good to go. So that's a tornado tree in Tulsa. That's what we, yeah, that's I what did we not know heard. that. That's uh, interesting. Alleg- allegedly. Uh, I think they got hit last you night. Did. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tree's no longer there. <laughs> He, he needs to get a copy of it and put it on his, uh, make an air freshener so when he's out chasing tornadoes, they don't blow his truck off the That's road. That's right. Storm, tornadoes don't scare me, though. Actually, what scares me, storm chasing more than anything, is the other fucking idiots chasing that don't pay attention to the road. I, I'm not really scared of them either. I, I'm a diver, and a couple years back, I, I, we always keep one on the boat. And two guys are down, and it was getting bad weather, and normally it's 30 minutes, 45 minutes on one bottle, so you're going to be up there by yourself for that long. And two water spouts started coming to the boat, and I was like, should I get in the water <laughs> and leave the boat? But if the boat gets sucked away, we're going to be stuck with nothing. And they come within, man, I would say half quarter mile of the boat but out on the water it looked like those right on top of it so i will say i was i had to just about change out jump back in the water and get clean my wetsuit <laughs> out how that. uh how how deep of water are y'all diving in um i'm i i don't like diving in anything deeper than 80 foot um because you just can't stay down. I don't dive with nitrox, so um, you know we're spear fishing. We can find we're we're so close to the coast here. That's why I like this area. I can shoot a one fifty to a one eighty class buck. I can quail wild bird hunt, and I can be in an offshore boat spear fishing within um, you know within an hour forty minutes. I can be on a grouper hole that's forty foot deep um snapper you know and what i like about spear fishing it don't matter if they're biting or not mm-hmm. yeah, i can pick i can pick out what i want to shoot and shoot them and come back to the top the only issue now is sharks i was gonna say jesus, jesus christ man the late last couple years you pull your your uh as soon as that rubber sound is you know they hear it um on your spear gun it, it's like a magnet they just show up and it's bull sharks, and they're just hanging out being thugs, and you know. What have you shot one? Now, of, shoot one of them. Problem. Have you ever shot one of them? I've had I've had to shoot one with a bang stick, a two twenty three round, one time. Um, I had my fish on a metal stringer, and I had several, you know, like lane snapper, grouper, and then. Um, so I normally take my safety sausage and hook it to my stringer and blow it up and let it go up. And then I go up on my downline by the boat just because I don't want to be coming up in cloudy water. Maybe it's clear on the bottom, but you get 20 foot up off the bottom. It gets real dirty, you know, like tea. And, yeah, I've had shark grab my stringer in my hand and pull it. So Hell no. I, I started pulling it up with my safety sausage. Yeah, well, he, they just come up, man, you know, kind of got – they're circling, got their fins back, wanting a fight. Uh, you could tell. And they kept circling closer and closer. They didn't just get the fish. So, uh, I put – I keep a bang stick in my – or a uh, 223 round. It's in a, this casing. 
and I take fingernail polish and paint around the the shell so salt water don't get in it and i hit him with that and they're like any other thug you punch one of them good in the nose the rest of them left and um, <laughs> it folded him up it was about a about an eight ten footer I, I didn't stick around to measure him it was a bit a lot bigger than i am i weighed 220 so he could have ate me um and but they, the rest of them were gone that, yeah. there is no way in hell i could do that shit I so saw, now hold on the bang stick like you, you like you have to hit it with it right and then it goes boom i shoot mine you do yeah so the spear punctures the bullet and then the bullet goes into that animal so how and you can shoot it how i can shoot it probably uh 15 foot 10 15 foot still that's way closer than i want to be to a fucking bull shark under the water you know three yards yeah, you better hey, you better hit him where you, you intend on. You don't miss. <laughs> mm, there's no way. Yeah. Well, have you seen a great white ever when you're diving? Yeah, uh, no, nah, no. Nah, nope. I think Miss Ellie's uh, nah, not, down there. I think uh, the big great white's right in, off Florida coast right now. Yeah, I don't want to fool one of those. Um the cool I've never really seen I remember I mean, it's really sharks aren't I mean they're like snakes. They're not mm -hmm. unless you mess with them. I mean Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times I've been around them. I mean, I, the one gangster that was hungry that wanted to fight, you know, was not as bad as. I mean, diving is really the biggest thing with diving is uh, is the other issues you come up with, you know, with air and all that. But man, it's like enough, you. I would tell people, you know. My wife gets massages like every other week, and she's like, all the noise just kind of goes away. Yeah. Um, when you get on the bottom of that ocean, you're in another world, man. It's uh, it's a, it's an outdoor. It's you know, you ever been duck hunting? I mean, and just in the afternoon, the sun's setting, and just kind of get close to God. Uh, that's how it is down on the bottom of the ocean. But there isn't very few people that's been down there. I mean, you're seeing something that it's kind of cool. It's a euphoria yeah. that not everybody understands for my, sure. My wife really wants to go scuba diving, and I, I, I just I don't have that in. I don't. I'm not about that life. See, I would, I would do it because I like the water. I would do it, but like, but maybe that's just the thing. Like, maybe once I do it, I'll find this, you know, this hidden thing that I didn't know ever existed. Like right now, you know, it's twelve, it's ten hours to the beach, so I didn't, I didn't grow up in that element but maybe once i tried it the first time i'd kind of calm my nerves but we were we were going to do it uh we took our 10-year anniversary to saint lucia and we were in the scuba diving class and they're going over everything that's going to go wrong for you and how you're going to fucking <laughs> die of the bins and all this other stuff and uh, uh uh god sent me a thunderstorm and, <laughs> and we canceled it i canceled it so um i don't know if i missed something that day or or what? I, I've always thought I wanted to scuba dive. Yeah. Until we were in Cosmel a couple of years ago and we were snorkeling and we got over the two thousand foot yeah, water. But you're not gonna scuba dive in that. No, but but when I could see the bottom at two hundred foot, I wasn't that bad because I thought, well, I can see something coming to eat my ass. But when we got over that two thousand foot of water and it just kind of the sun faded away to nothing down there, and all I could picture was that big fucking island fucking jaws looking up at me. <laughs> and I was like, fuck that shit. That, that's enough for me. Cause that that really nah, bothers me. New. I mean, it's just new. If you if you were from here and close, it, you know, it's just. I mean, I'm sure you got guys in South Texas that's close to the coast area. That I mean, it's just I, it's just where you're from. I mean, I think I, I, too. I think you're right. You grew up, it's it's just part of your normal. Yeah. It's kind of like surfing. You don't find a lot of surfers in Knox City, Texas. There's a reason why. We ain't no, got ocean and I'd nowhere. be afraid to surf too because you're the on a fucking surfboard and you look like a seal, and here they well, come. Well, I love the dove hunt. I love the duck hunt, quail hunt, and my season never ends. Yeah, yeah. No, you're exactly you see right. What I'm saying? Okay, I want to I want to yep. ask, so, ask you a question there. You live in Thomasville. I'm assuming you're going fit. You're you're diving Panama City, uh, Acapulco, somewhere off there. Where you where are yep. you diving out of? So like we're my my daughters are on spring break this week. So as soon as we get off this podcast, I'm headed. We're headed to the coast. So we go to Alligator Point. Uh, Panacea, uh, St. George Island. <laughs> We've stayed uh, at St. We rented a house there. It's an awesome place. Yeah. Yeah. St. George Island. We go there probably at least if he added up all the nights, at least a month, at least 30 nights. Wow. That summer. That's an awesome um, place that not many people know about. 
Yeah, it's it's dude. It's uh, you know, it's getting more, it's a lot more crowded now than it was when I was a kid. But uh yeah, I mean, I've got several buddies that's got boats. My father-in-law's got a his boat set uh right there in Panacea, not Panacea, but uh, CPO Creek Marina. My, is right beside. My my question was then because that area right there. I used to watch that show with the loggers and they would get the old sunken trees out of the black water river. There ain't yep. no way in hell I would dive in that place. There's alligators, sharks, and a water. You can't see your fucking hand in front of you. Have you dived? Yeah. In, a lot of, yeah. You've dived in them rivers. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No. I dived to Flint. Yep. Uh, I've got my, so my, my in-laws place is uh Baker County, Georgia. They own, both sides of the Chickasaw Hatchie Creek uh, for like probably close to a mile. I'll get just guessing. I'm not sure. We never measured it, and because it zigzags. But I dive it some too. I mean, we're talking like five foot. But uh, there's a there's several you know Indian artifacts and things like that. Now, if you're out in government water, uh, like state owned water, it's it's against the law to to get artifacts out but if you own the own it then you can so in, in georgia if you own both sides of uh the a navigable creek i think it's just baker county because the ecological there's a test center there and they changed the rules so they couldn't just do it for them they had to do it for private landowners too and don't hold me to any of this but i, I just know that if you own both sides of certain counties of the water can't you you can stop traffic and you also can do essentially what you want to do in that area. So we we I dive it a ton. That not a ton, but several times a year. That's a pretty area, but I could not get in that water for nothing. But I really enjoyed St. George Island. I've never seen so many sharks in my entire life of as I did in Apalachicola Bay fishing one morning. Baby sharks. Oh so. yeah. It's uh -huh. up well. Baby sharks, wasn't it? Fuck no Big baby sharks. sharks. I mean, some fishes were eight, ten, twelve foot long. Oh. Big as the boat we were in. And the fishing guide, it was a funny yeah. story. We had a fishing guide there, and I asked him. We, the boys wanted to catch sharks. So I was like, yeah, let us, you know, can we catch sharks? He goes, yeah. He goes, I don't want to catch a big shark. And, you know, my boys, I like, want to shoot, you know, catch one big as the boat. We want jaws. And the guy's like, hell no. And so we, we, we caught one, and he kind of knocked it over the head and killed it. I said, you don't try to let him go. He said, hell no. He said, I had some, uh, they were doing a Hawaiian Tropics calendar event there one time and he said i had a couple of these hot chicks with bikinis on there and i grabbed this shark and i was going to take it off for him you know and show him and that some bitch turned around and bit him and he had a scar on his arm hand with that shark right you know all they like, got is cartilage and bit the shit out of him he said i don't screw with them no more he said all they do is tear up equipment and they're not worth the crap to have in the boat yeah i i mean they eat pretty good but now nah, i mean it, around St. George, a lot of people from out of town come and chum up the water and fish off the beach. So, my personal opinion, that's brought a lot of a lot of them up. You know, that's a beautiful closer. That's for closer. for people that don't know and haven't been to St. George Island. What I really liked about it was we rented a house on the beach. We could leave our stuff on the beach all night, and there was nobody mess with you because it was just the people at that house used that part of the beach. There was no driving up well, and down the beach. Yep. Yeah. So listen, man, there is no better. We got some of the best law enforcement in the United States at, down here. Like they don't play the fiddle. Mm -hmm. with, now, I'm not saying we don't have issues, but uh, the sheriffs, I know every sheriff from where I'm sitting at all the way to there. And I've made all of them gun belts, most of them, that you know, and, and uh, we're all like it, awesome. They don't put up with crap like you're gonna come down here and show out i mean i'm not saying your stuff might not get stolen down there but it won't happen but right. one time yeah it was yeah no like this is like 1920s law here. <laughs> yeah i, I love i love st george island it was a beautiful place and i like that part of the deal where you could leave your shit there one day we were there and jimmy buffett flew by in his plane i guess he owns a place pretty or owned a place he's dead yeah. now but he did uh, Kid Rock, Jimmy Buffett. There's a lot of, you know, famous, but people. And one reason, like down there, nobody messes with them. Like you can see, you know, I'm not saying like tourists might not, but here it's not uncommon to see. It's kind of like being in Nashville, you know, see uh, more kind of famous people shopping downtown here, my local town. We're at the beach. 
they got houses like nobody really bought they don't care no they just I mean, want to be uh, themselves the biggest the biggest yeah. scam ever though is an Apalachicola. you could pay money to work on an oyster boat for a morning. <laughs> now, if you've ever seen them, some bitches work on an oyster boat and they got those big ass rakes and they're in the deal and people are paying $200. I was like, I would be a mad son of a gun if I paid 200 freaking dollars to have to work a damn oyster rake right. all day long. There is no way in hell I would want to do that. My granddad always told me you don't ever pick a fight with a sheet rocker, a roofer, or a horse. Oh, guy. I'm telling you. <laughs> you, can, you can if they get a hold of you, they're never letting go. Yeah, you gonna you you, you imagine work, working them rakes all day? Oh. No hands, dude. They yeah. gonna slap taste out your mouth. <laughs> we got we got to the boat and we was getting on the boat to fish. And this oyster guy was there. He goes, "Are you my tour?" I go, "Tour for what?" He goes, "Oh yeah, I've got a tour." He goes, and then the our captain told me, "I thought, fuck, I'd be so pissed off." Hey, Pappy, let's go on vacation. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, let's go on this oyster tour. This we'll learn a lot. Yeah, you'll learn real quick while you went to college or got you a job doing something else. That is a man's man's job right there. Oh, just yeah, they stopped it in the bay. Now they they're not a, they stopped it. Wow, that's got to be a lot of jobs. Yeah, it, man, those jokers raised hell. I mean, a lot of them have went to having oyster farms, but uh, just so you know. But I love Apalachicola Bay oyster. I mean, back when they were, you know, able to harvest them. I think it's coming back. I mean, it's not going for good. It was just a. A lot of fresh water and man, people don't realize the mixture it takes to grow a good oyster. Wow. Yeah. You know, I went to Apalachicola when I was a kid. I was probably 10 years old, eight, 10, late. It was about 76, 77. So I was eight, nine years old. And we went there and we stayed and we had a, my, Michelle calls it a kitchen on wheels. It was a Winnebago at the time. And, and we stopped on the, uh, we stopped in Panama City and Destin and we stayed on the beach. There was nobody there hardly at all just crazy because then i went back 20 years later and i was like what the hell happened to this place because back then it was just a seaside florida countryside type beach i mean there was a couple of hotels but it wasn't a big tourist trap like it is now in apalachicola we stayed there at the koa and they had oyster the roads were made out of oyster shells you tell me i get some dove in <laughs> they break up some oyster shells oh yeah now you don't want you don't want the green britches showing up but <laughs> yeah that's yeah, or ducks too. That and chufa seed. Dude, man. Oyster shells and chufa seed. What do they that use that a, for? The oyster shells, they oh. grit. That's the best bait you can use. If you built a pond in, anywhere out here and you brought in truckloads of oyster shells that were crushed and you put them in the bottom of the bill, yep. they'll get your ass for baiting. That's mm -hmm. the best bait in the yeah, world. Crushed oh, crush oyster shells and yeah. chufa seed. A lot of these rednecks around here, I call, I remember my buddies, but they take uh, crushed oyster shells, uh, chufa seed, and then maple, powdered maple uh, syrup and put mm -hmm. it in the drum and for wood ducks. And they'll take crop dusters and have them dump it in a, a hopper over big uh, swamps. And then, uh, you know, the, the syrup gets on the feathers and when they go back, they prune it. You know, that's the old, but they have barn burners. I we don't really we don't have to bait to have wood ducks right. really, uh, but it's stupid. Uh, yeah, it, it works. Oyster shell, and you can get them here so fast. I mean, you know, it's not expensive. I yeah, did you, not you know, know that. Text, about oh yeah, oysters. Yeah, you get if you put you a tank in down here yeah. and you took oyster shells and crushed them up and put them in the bottom, you'd have ducks all season because now, they're gritting. Now, what if you just like had you an oyster shucking party by your pond and you just eating? Are you trying to explain to us how you're cheating? Uh, no, 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 I, I mean, mean, I'm not cheating. I mean, we talked about OJ Simpson getting by with shit. Not cheating. Just you're not going to get rules. by. You don't have. You do not have rich privilege. So yeah, they'd bust your ass. Really, you can't do that. Yeah, it's against the rules. And plus, uh, y'all would be y'all being duck guides. Uh, there's a lot of plant flood duck ponds on these big plantations yeah. here. You ought to see the redheads and uh, different species of ducks that migrate into those plant flood duck ponds i mean they calling them in just like y'all would uh you know out there i mean any kind of species of ducks that come up and down the east coast i mean my granddad would tell us tales of the ducks that come down the east coast when he was mm -hmm. a kid he was born in 1918 uh he's dead now but you know but the some of these plantations i'll get an invite a couple times a year to go a plant flood duck pond and I mean, I can get to take the same calls 
that I would take out the tank. You don't know what's going to start. Really? That's your- Just a hodgepodge of everything. Hodgepodge of, man, you name it from you may kill a teal like in late season that you would never see to a redhead that's headed to the coast that needs a break to mallards to wood ducks to, I mean, you name it. Uh, I've got all kind of ducks mounted here at the house that people in Georgia didn't even know were flying overhead. Hmm. I want to go. Uh, I want to go back to the snake, Brian. You had a picture on Instagram yep. two days ago, and you were brining, or it might have been three or four days ago, but it was you were brining snake skins. Yep. You were doing them yourself. How how many yep. different snakes? So when when the people send you the snake, all they're doing is sending you the actual skin, right? That's and right. And you put it in a brine. What keeps yep. it from tearing up? Just the, just so we we it's called a pickle. It's uh. When we tan, the, our process for tanning, a lot of taxidermy and leather workers do a glycerin and alcohol tan. That's it. They take it, they get the fat off of it, stick it in a thing of glycerin and alcohol, and they take it out, tack it out, and let it dry. Well, that is probably the worst tan for leather goods there is. Now, in, in a dry area that there's little to no humidity, it works. It, it works and it, it retains a lot of color. But for us, with a lot of humidity, glycerin absorbs the water from the air is glycerin in hand soap. So you, you get it, you know, lotions, it, the glycerin gets in your skin, your skin stays soft because it's got water. in it. That's essentially. So you take the alcohol and I'm going to explain how we do it different versus what other people do. Uh, we, we bring it in and we put it in vinegar, which is a high acidity, low pH. Uh, we have it around 2.2 to 2.0 pH level. We take, uh, you know, testing strips and test it. So we get it there, and then we do 10 pounds of salt per gallon of water. Really salty vinegar water. It's a pickle, just like you would eat. So we leave it in there for two to 10 days, um, and then we pull it out and we neutralize it, bring the pH 4.0. And then essentially that water is just salt water at that point. And then we uh, take it out of there and we uh, we do a, uh, it's a, actually a tree bark extract. We let it soak in it for uh, 24 to 48 hours. And then we take it out, dry it, uh, leather jacket, a toggle it, leather jacket, oil it, finish it, trim it, and then it's ready for leather goods. And it's actual like a veg tan snake skin, which retains its natural colors. Right. We lose a little more color than you will with glycerin and alcohol tan. Um, we, we do lose some color, but we our stuff is on anywhere from five hundred to five thousand dollar pair of cowboy boots. So like, we we do it right. Yeah, you have to for that. It's it's an interesting yep. deal. I saw that yep. Brian and I just thought, wow, that's crazy. And then yeah, we we'll normally do we weigh them. So it, it really don't matter how many skins in there. It's about how much weight's in there. Okay. Of flesh, of hide. So, like, there's no book, really, you can read to learn this. There's some little tricks that we're doing that I'll never mm-hmm. tell um, that we've had to learn. Uh, I mean, the process I just explained is the reason most taxidermy, if you're just mounting a snake for a lodge, glycerin alcohol is fine. But if you're going to glue it, you don't want that skin absorbing moisture all the time. And then it's going to decay the glue, and then it's going to separate and fall apart. So uh, you want leather, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. What's uh, what's the animal that's the biggest pain in your ass to deal with? Um, The biggest animal I ever dealt with the- was a bag I made for a buddy of mine. He killed a zebra. Oh, really? And it was the way it was tan. It was tan in Africa. I don't know what they tanned it with, but it, <laughs> God damn, we caught hell with that joker. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, I mean, we sell just as many handbags now as we do belts. But, like, we're known. What got our start is rattlesnake uh, belts and python belts. We're starting to get a lot of python out of Florida. Mm-hmm. Not a lot, but some. They're just unrealistic. So far, they have been unrealistic with their prices. Really? And I might not say that. Why? <laughs> yeah, man, because I can get it from India, mm. Python from India, which is where it's from, for half the price that I can get it from anybody in Florida right. for. 
So, I, you know, we're in business. I'm all about America, you know, military. We're all, uh, you know, American love America, but we can't charge $700 for a Python built where somebody can get one from Mexico for 125 right, exactly. You know, we've got, we've got to look at price and the, everybody I have talked to, you know, they may be somebody that could compete with the, but they've got to get, they're double, if not triple any Python out of Florida. Um, of what I we can get it through from India. Right. I'm still stuck on a grown man having a zebra bag. <laughs> Maybe it's for his wife. No, nah, it wasn't his okay, for his good. wife. That makes me feel better because I was I was thinking about that. I thought, God, no, nah, we don't. Hey, we don't deal with those. <laughs> <laughs> I just it's. I, I might be on, on I might be on CNN <laughs> like the cake bakers were. <laughs> Have you seen the uh, the rattlesnake hay dudes? Yeah, well, yeah, he's got them. You're, you're yeah, doing the rattlesnake hay dudes. That's getting to be big everywhere. Yeah, we do hundreds. Those of them. are everywhere now. I saw them. So you're the you. Got me a pair. Are, are they comfortable? Yeah, I mean, it's still cheap ass shoe, but <laughs> you know. Yeah. But That's yeah, them right there. I just think if I got me some of them, I'd look like I was a cartel member. I just. No, the, the thing is, is where the cost is. Is so I'm paying. Say thirty to fifty dollars, sixty dollars for a snake. Then we gotta do the process. I just explained. Then we cut it out. We've got patterns cut. We gotta cut it out, glue it, and then I don't. I can't get hey dudes wholesale. So I'm paying the same thing that Andy's gonna pay going into his shoe right. store. Um, and then you know, so they're kind of pricey. I think we sell this for one eighty nine, where the shoe cost me fifty to seventy bucks. You got. You know, we're not making a killing, but we sell the piss I can see people doing I mean, them. My problem is any shoe like that, I wear in my yard, and they don't last very damn long. I mean, they get tore up. I don't wear them to the club to go play golf or to have dinner. I wear them around the house and shit. Man, you know, 90%, I'm going to bring this up, 95% of my customers are awesome. But we, I can tell when the Houston Rodeo <laughs> and the big events in Texas come, because let me tell you what some of these fools do. They'll buy a pair of these hey dudes. And they'll wear them. And then they'll say, oh, man, I don't like the way the something's wrong with them, you know. And the way I am, I stand behind our stuff. But like, we'll ship them back. And you can tell they've been worn. Yeah. And it's like, you know, this is some. But it's it never happened until, like, a big event comes. It's kind of funny. Like, Houston Rodeo, dude, I'm going to get burnt down. <laughs> I'll get at least 20 to 50 of them. I can't imagine. And then they send them back after the rodeo. Sending a shoe back. Oh, God, beer man. and Jägermeister no, and all, all or such a shit on top of them. I found, oh, yeah. I found me a new shoe I like, and, and I've bought three pair of them in the last two months. These Columbia, I've got Columbia's got like a slip on. They're not a tennis shoe, boat shoe kind of com combat, but they're comfortable. I like them. I'll probably hey, end up owning ten of those. You just giving up? And if he starts wearing Velcro shoes, you know he's giving, he's giving up. No, I'm not he's wearing no fucking up. Velcro. He, he don't want to bend down anymore. But he's just giving up. Diabetic shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but I love these Columbia shoes. They're comfortable. Yeah, and you ain't got to fucking tie them. Well, yeah. No shit. You just slip them on and well, out the door you but go. But I would, I would buy these with laces in them if they had them oh, even. Fucking I don't, but they're comfortable. The, my, I wouldn't want to go jogging. What shoe you wear? A 10 and a half, 10 or 10 and a half. You, you know what's funny? I'm going to send you some rattlesnake hey dudes. I can fix there you, you up. Go. You know what's funny is my... Uh, I, you do, and I'll wear them, and I'll take a picture of them. I'll wear them. that would be my casino shoe. If they're good luck, I'll be wearing them some bitches. They'll be like, there's that fat fucker in them damn rattlesnake shoes again. I, but I'm i telling you, though. I'm so fucking afraid of snakes. Well, I don't I, even want the skin by me. Like, Because I guarantee you, I'm going to go stumble into my closet in the middle of the night, and I'm going to see those shoes sitting there. It's going to scare the piss out of me. Those things are freaking. What you're doing is awesome. Yeah, I like I, them. while we're talking shoes, real quick, did you see the fucking people in California stealing Crocs out of the shoes? The ladies, why the hell of all places? If you're going to go in and get in trouble for stealing shit, and in California they don't do much, why would you go to a Croc store to steal bags and bags of Crocs? Right. How many people I, in the ghetto I, I, wear it, Crocs anyways? Yeah, well, you know they can stop that. I mean, oh, the easy. first person that walks through the door. And walks out with some in the hands. If somebody just blows your freaking leg off mm -hmm. with a, 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 you know, and I, I just don't get. We don't, man. We'll give. We we give to everybody. Ask. We're all, but I I ain't playing the shit with somebody stealing. Yeah. Like no. If I catch somebody stealing, I am. You know. I will go to prison. I, stealing is stupid. Yes, I. And well, here you ain't gonna get in trouble because if you steal here and you get shot, you just go. You just. Dead. That's what it should. That's uh, what it should be. 
Isn't that what the Florida governor, or not governor, was it the governor? Or the, no, it was a police chief in some Florida town. Yeah, it was like, Polk County, I think. We welcome oh. vigilantes. Yeah, I don't, I don't, oh, yeah, I, I, mean, I can't imagine getting by with that shit. But in California, they just load that shit up. I'm telling you, when I was in San Francisco, they got signs everywhere. And if you do anything to prevent them from stealing from you, then you're going to get in trouble, which is complete. That's why everybody's leaving California, well, all the, them states. Lululemon fired two girls because they called 911 because their store was getting robbed. That's, so well, Lululemon canned them. Well, oh, right, Rose, we're opening stores. My, my goal is to put a store here, Charleston, South Carolina. I want to go to Texas. Uh, I want uh, South Lake is down, where you need to go. Yeah, I, I wanna I wanna get out, get 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 growing. We we are. I mean, we've got heat maps. We we got analytics. I mean, we we're taught redneck, but we we put some <laughs> put some thought into uh, you know, into gr our growth. And uh, I mean, I, we're all about community supporting baseball teams. I mean, we paying for a beauty patch, anything. But I promise you. If somebody steals in one of our stores and we catch them, I, my employees are all, it's, it, you know, if you're not kind of like we are, you don't stick around too long. The, yeah. uh, that South Lake Village Town Center is a great place. It's a higher end deal in Dow, a wealthy end of Fort Worth, Dallas area. Good people, and they have zero crime in that area just about. It's a really nice area. But that's the way it should be. You shouldn't be able to go in a store and steal shit. But if you're going to go steal shit, I'm going to the fucking Rolex or Louis Vuitton store. I'm not going to freaking Crocs. Crocs. I was looking at that, and I told Michelle, I go, what is wrong with his picture? She goes, they're getting away with that stuff. I said, no, they're in a freaking croc store. You know? I just, I couldn't believe well, it. Well, a lot of these a lot of these store owners and boards have been sued, and lawyers, they're, they're scared to death. Of, and, you know, ink pen is powerful. I mean, when that sheriff pulls up mm -hmm. serving you papers because you're getting sued, I mean, it's nerve-wracking. But if you're in a county that's got a good DA, a local DA, like we do here, good local judges, a uh, good sheriff. I mean, they're not going, it ain't going to hold water. Yeah. I mean, so just don't, you know, these areas, like our home's for sale right now, my, my wife and I's home. And they're showing it today to a couple from New York. And they don't know anybody here, I was told, uh, because they're getting sick of that crap. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, you know, and I think it all too goes back to money and not getting bought out. I know some local businesses that went are traded now. I'm not going to say names and, you know, like Black Rock and big, big, huge companies that bought most of the shares. And now they're turning into your typical corporate company. Um, you know, money's just dangerous. Man. It is. Yeah. Money gets people jacked up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like Jeff was saying, there's no reason you should be able to go in a store and steal. There's also no reason you should be go, be able to go into a vacant house and just say, well, this is just where I live now. They said New York City, it takes two years to kick two years out. to move a squatter out of your fucking house. That's complete bullshit. Well, we just moved out of ours last night. I worked all night cleaning our house last night. I have not slept <laughs> uh, because I'm leaving spring break and the realtor calls late yesterday afternoon. He's like, hey, you got a show in at 3.30 today. And you forgot how much stuff's under your couch mm -hmm. and under your bed. So I, I stayed cleaning, mopping, sweeping, got painters there today for this 3.30 showing. But if I get back from the beach and there's somebody in there, y'all may hear about it. <laughs> That's what you should. You shouldn't even have to think about that crap. I did see where Portland, Oregon, uh, yesterday, their governor signed, signed a bill now to, to criminalize now drug use. Oh, yeah. that, that didn't work. But what's crazy was they did a poll, and I don't trust polls because they go to just certain neighborhoods. They said in the state of Oregon two years ago, 58% of the people in the state of Oregon were okay with people using methamphetamines on the road, on the streets. What the hell's wrong with people? I flew out to Colorado the other week and come out of a steakhouse. And, you know, there's, I, I don't, I don't play drugs at all, any kind. But I, you know, I was by my, didn't have my family, but I could smell marijuana, you know, and I was like, hmm. And, and I don't care if somebody smokes it. I mean, that's, that's their business. But uh, I got to talking to the guy I was doing, it was a business trip. And he was like, man, it's, it might as well, they might as well legalize cocaine here too, because most of these cops, if they pull somebody over and it ain't much, they're just, you know, it's a misdemeanor. I don't know the laws, but he's like, it's, it's just everywhere. Yeah. So it started to me in Dare. I don't know if y'all had Dare there, but here oh, we yeah. had Dare. It was like you know, marijuana is a gateway drug, and 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 I personally think it is. Like I personally, I don't care if somebody does it, but if you're 
back when it was really illegal, if you had the threat of going to jail, so if you were ballsy enough to have it then, then you'd be ballsy enough to try something else if it was available. So I essentially get where, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just, uh, it's just not good. I mean, I've had family members get hooked on some really bad stuff. I, everybody's got, you know, somebody closer to them. And it's just not good, man. It's not, it's not productive for employees. It's not productive for anything. Yeah, we were in, we were in Chatham, Mass. Me and Michelle went into a store in October and it's marijuana is legal there. And I'm not a smoker. I don't give a shit what you do. If it doesn't affect me, I don't want you doing meth and coke, but if you want to smoke marijuana, I think marijuana has some things that are very good for, for society. I really do. I don't know why you got to smoke the shit, take a gummy where it don't affect everyone else, but that smell, but this kid came out of the back at like nine 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. He was baked. His eyes were done. I told Michelle, I go, what in the hell's wrong? alcohol has been legal. If that kid come out drunk, stumbling drunk at 10 o'clock in the morning, they'd fire his ass. But now that marijuana is legal, it's okay to get stoned all day long at work. And I don't, I, as yeah. an employer, I don't understand that. No. I'll tell you how long no. you'd last no. around here, about three minutes and I'd well, fire you. You were at a kid baseball game last weekend yes, there with the somebody. Was smoking freaking pot at my granddaughter's softball game. It smelled like a skunk. And this black, yeah. this black lady tore into his ass. Really? She told him, she said, listen, you can put that stuff up till this game's over. There are kids here. We don't need to see that. You're hitting that thing way too hard in front of everybody. Well, I mean, the game's an hour and a half long. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. and that goes for anything. I mean, you can't put a cigarette down for an, I don't want to smell cigarette smoke. No, like, not it, at all. I mean, if that's blown over me, it's the same thing. Like, have a little bit of respect. It's an, the game's an hour and a half long. You can't go an hour and a half without a cigarette in your mouth or but, a joint or a beer. I don't know why they think if he was sitting there drinking a Coors Light. They kicked him out. Oh, they rested his ass. It's against the law. Well, you know, I would rather ride with somebody back when I was single. I'd rather ride somebody stoned and oh, drunk yeah, on liquor. So that, yeah, that's my, that's my, you know, that's my two cents. I don't, I'm not a, necessarily against it, but it's just, man, you know, I, I, I my, I've, and I'm not something I want to get into really, but my, my older brother overdosed. Mm. So it's, Dude, I, it, it gets me sideways. Like, people don't know what they're playing with fire, man. Well, especially uh, now with fentanyl. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what, and that's where it comes from, you know. And they, you don't know what you're, you know, some kid just gets some marijuana. We had right south of us in Florida, uh, one of the largest growing places is available. And it's it's everywhere now. Well, it's some, one of the dealers was out of town and they soaked the marijuana and fentanyl is what. <sighs> But I was old, and it killed like I think it was six uh, seniors mm. a couple years back. Damn it! Right south of here, about fifty miles, they found them just asleep, dead. Fuck. Um, all from smoking one joint at a party. Mm. So you know, it's it's dangerous, man. Yeah, you, you never know fun. what you're taking, and you. I mean, it just. I, I don't know. It's a bad, bad trend, and it's just getting worse and worse in our country. So I that came from a that came from a grow house, like a legit place. No, 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 no just no. like a, off the off yeah, the record grow house. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of normal. So it's kind of right. like people's got license to smoke it, so you see it more. So I, I think I don't know. There just needs either legalize it completely, so the, the, there's a market for the people to soak it in fentanyl. You know, just legalize it everywhere, or there needs to be some more structure to it because i mean it's affected my family really bad um it's uh i mean there's thousands of stories just like ours we could you know if we got into it mm -hmm. it's a, all over across the country yeah, that, but that's that i mean you could see where the argument is to legalize it that way it's regulated that way nothing like that ever happens again just marijuana like cocaine but, and all that shit but and, there's no amount the hardcore the the big drugs you don't think you can buy street pot still in colorado no i that's what but that's but why would you is the thing oh, I, I don't if know you can, but if you can go to a place and then it's regulated it's legalized and there's some regulations oh, to it not, you know what i mean not disagreeing with you on any of that in abilene texas about three years ago they had some kids got into some bad shit i don't know if they were taking meth i don't know if it was coke heroin i don't know if it was pot but it had been laced with fentanyl and they had three or four kids died one night same type deal but what they did was, is, is they come down pretty hard on them, and then it happened in Wichita Falls. In Wichita Falls, they filed murder charges on the guys that they were should. selling it. They should. And that, and that, you know, they made them responsible for them deaths. Well, I think that's a great thing. 
But are you going to do the same thing if someone gets uh, cocaine and overdoses on cocaine? Are you going to do the same thing or is it just going to be a fentanyl deal? If you sell an illegal drug to someone and they die, then I think you should be responsible for what that. What about if they sold alcohol to an underage kid and that kid goes and kills somebody in a car? They have laws on that. They do? Yes. You get the you get the dealer also of the beer and whiskey? If you sell, if you sell a kid Is underage deal and you can prove yeah, it's there's a law on it. Same as overserved that kid. The kid in Nashville, did you have you seen that deal with the kid that died drowned the other day in Nashville? Did you know about that? Yeah, I did. And, and the yep. kid fell in the Cumberland River and drowned and you know, they kicked him out of uh, Luke Bryan's bar, I think. They made him leave. But his shitty-ass friends, now this is where your friends are shit. Nobody went with him. They let this drunk kid just leave. Now, you're responsible for your own actions. I agree with that. But you'd think his friends, Bill's so fucking drunk he can't walk. Well, anyways, he talked to a cop, busy with a cop, walked on down the deal, and they fell in the river, and he drowned. Really? Yeah. And they, I hadn't seen that. Yeah, it happened like two weeks ago. But <clears throat> they didn't serve. They kicked him out of Luke Bryan's because he was too drunk. They just let him go on the road. His friends didn't go with him. Yeah, he'll make it back to the VRBO. He'll be all right, but he died. But there's no law against <clears throat> being irresponsible. As a no, friend, just being a no, shitty no, friend. No, 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 it's a shitty but friend. But, I mean, who are you wanting to go no, after here? No, but someone overserved that kid somewhere. I don't know. I mean, it just had to be. But that's the tough deal you get to. You get to a bar. You can go to any bar in America on a Friday night, and someone's overserved. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. Or they show up drunk. Overserved. And then, yeah. yeah. Drunk yeah. And Self-served. You give them two, and they're really drunk. You know, as a judge for a long time, I dealt with some drunks more than one time, lots of times. Like when, drunk when they came in or just you're dealing with their drunk actions? I've drunk drunk actions, but I've had to go see them. I've had to deal with them when they're still drunk mm. <clears throat> multiple times. And I've also dealt with a lot of people that were stoned out of their mind on meth and everything else. It's easier to deal with someone on a drug than it is on alcohol. Oh, yeah, and if you ask belligerent. any paramedic or doctor, anybody that works in the ER, they'll tell you they'd much rather deal with a dope head than a drunk. I bet that's right. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, alcohol is the only drug that is known that makes you violent. It's the only drug. There's not another drug that's out there that makes people angry and agitated. We saw it. Like, we were in Nashville. We were doing a Q&A on the street. And about 11.30, 11.45 at night, the crowd went from kind of playing around with us. And, you know, we'd have some fun with some questions to fucking angry. We pulled up and left. They were mean. They were mean past about 11.30. We left quickly. But it's just oh, yeah. people get drunk. People get a mob mentality, too, when there's a big crowd. Yeah, there. yeah a bunch of drunks together is no fun to be with. No. 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 Nah. I'm out on that. I mean, we, we forget we're all uh, ancestors of killers. Yeah. I mean, our ancestors all the way up until maybe 100 years ago had to. So then you get everybody together, and then you start feeding off each other. And, you, I mean, a crowd of drunks turns into a good bloody fist well fight. that's what was interesting this i'm glad you brought this up because this was interesting when we were at the bass classic we were uh we were at a bar and we had this little private area and right below us i mean we're not like up on a balcony it's like two steps up and like we've got a little area well like right below us there's guys doing arm wrestling matches here and it was interesting like this guy acted like a fucking monkey beating his chest it was the <laughs> but i mean like he'd win this arm wrestling match and he's fucking puffing his chest out and beating his chest and i'm sitting there i felt like a what do they call those people that study monkeys i felt like a what, primatologist what, primatologist like i'm watching him and his buddies acting like a bunch of fucking monkeys like i'm not i'm not, I'm not bullshitting like that was the only thing i could think of i was like this is an interesting case study here like i wonder if that's how he is in his real life I wonder if that's how he is just on his normal nine to five. Is he always like this braggadocious beating his chest? And then like, and then the fights start breaking out after that. And it's just like, son of a bitch. We're just a bunch of fucking Neanderthals so in this be- bar. He was beating his chest. Oh my God. He'd win an arm wrestling match and he'd fucking do this. <laughs> and he's fucking boot scooting and boogieing and, you know, just doing all this, all this shit. But I'm like, did he beat everybody? No, 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 no. So, so this is where this is where we'll have we'll have Jack on here to tell his side of the story. So, Jack, our friend, Jack Jack Zimmerman, lost both of his legs in Afghanistan, uh, two thousand eight, nine, ten, eleven, one of those years. Oh, Speedy. Oh, Speedy. So he's in his Segway, and this guy beats a guy on arm wrestling, and Jack. The he's music, not in a Segway. He's in a damn wheelchair. Well, yeah, it's a wheelchair, but it's it's a Segway. Well, Segways people stand. Right. Well, no, no, no disrespect. Anyway. 
So um, Jack, the music's loud. So Jack's like, hey, he calls the guy that's, that's beating everybody. He said, tell that guy you want to go double or nothing. And the guy couldn't hear him. And he thought Jack was talking shit. So he starts talking shit to Jack. Yeah, a guy in a wheelchair he's talking shit to? Yeah, yeah, What a yeah. piece of shit. So he starts talking shit to Jack. And then Jack starts talking shit to him. And, like, I'm hearing it all. And me and Connor from Boss, we're sitting there. And I'm like, are we about to have to fucking fight for Jack? Like, <laughs> are we going to have to fight this monk, this fucking orangutan? Like, is that what we're about to have to do with this bar? So we're, like, looking at each other like, I don't know what the deal is. So Jack tells the guy, he's like, listen. There's no upside to you in this fight. Because if I kick your ass, you're just the guy that got his ass kicked by a guy in a wheelchair. He said, and if you kick my ass, you're just a guy that whipped a guy in a wheelchair. Like, there's no upside here for you. So anyway, that kind of quells everything. And I'm like, fucking shit, we're going to have to fight. We're going to fight for Jackson get knocked out of the wheelchair. We're going to have to fight. So um, Maddie Robertson has a, has a friend of his that uh, was at this thing. And he's Willie. He's a big guy. Willie, big man. And uh, Willie puts his beer down and walks down there. And I'm like, well, here we go. Willie's going to fucking deck the guys. So we're, we're fighting. And Willie goes down, t- turns his hat backwards, and arm wrestles a guy right down on the table. So that guy lost. So his girlfriend comes up to him, and she's hugging him like, oh, baby, it's all right. It's going to be okay. Like, you know, I, I still love you. I'm not going home with him. Don't worry about it. What a woman. So a couple minutes later, this guy comes up onto our little area. And I'm like, oh, shit, here it is. And he's like, hey, let's do it left-handed. And Willie says, perfect, I'm left-handed, let's go. And he just <laughs> clocks him there, and it's all over with. But Can you imagine your whole night is revolved around you getting arm wrestle people to I'm bar? I'm telling you, it was like studying a bunch of primates. It was it was the interesting thing. Guy had yeah. a mullet and, you know, all sorts of stuff. And he was going to fight a guy in a wheelchair. It got, it got tense. It got tense. I was I was nervous. Jack's got both his legs blown off overseas on all them tours. Oh, he's not scared he of that scared guy. He scared of that fucker he's at been all. In, he's been in way sketchier situations. And I just, than... I, I just, you can't win. I knew a guy that had one arm that used to fight a lot growing up and guys would fight him and he could fucking fight. He'd make that, that, that nub he'd mm-hmm. have. He'd poke in the eye with that fucking nub and rub your eyeball out. So you didn't, it wasn't a fair fight regardless. And right. you thought the fair part was he only had one arm. Yeah. No, he had a big advantage with that nub. Right. But you think about a piston, a fucking nub hitting you, that fucking hurt. Poke but if you, if you hit him, you look like a freaking asshole. So yeah. you couldn't win one way or another. That's what Jack told this guy. Yeah. But I can't believe it come that close to getting in a fight. It was tense. It was tense. Well, I'm glad I didn't have to bail you out of the Tulsa jail. Your wife would be so proud of you. Mm, not good. I be, I, I, in my younger days, I was a fighter, but I've hung my hat. You are? Yeah, oh, man. Really? But, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. I different, love, different world. I preacher son, man. Preacher son, man. Yeah. Do, yeah. do what? Preacher son. Oh. I was, I, yeah. Uh, Drinking. Yeah. Southern Baptist preacher son, worst one. Yeah. <laughs> so what, just every weekend you just figured you were – I love drag race or fight or, you know, just being, you know, that's why I tell guys now, I mean, like, I don't trust a man too much if he ain't never been in one fist fight. Because at some point, somebody's done, got sideways with him and he left. Like, he took his tail and run. So, you know, I, that's just, you know, me cutting up. But there's some truth to it. I mean, builds character. uh, No, we're just boys, you know, back. In the nineties, you kind of could get in a fight, not right. get in trouble, you know. And so well, and you also didn't yeah, have to worry about anyway. getting stabbed or shot whenever you left the bar. Yeah. No, I, I got my butt whooped one good time, and that that taught me a lesson. <laughs> like so if, if, I think about it now, I, it's still that I won't fight, but it's like I remember that one time. <laughs> it worked over good, so I never <laughs> have had my ass whooped by anybody in my life other than my dad. Right. But uh, but they may, they may put the deal on here. I've only been in probably three fist fights in my entire life. I've come awful close oh, a lot of times. I mean, but if somebody I thought could whip my ass, I could talk my <laughs> way out of most shit. <laughs> or I was a big enough guy when I was younger that people didn't fuck with me much. Right. My brother was a fucking scrapper and a fighter. Tony kept me out of a lot of fights because people would get us confused with who I was. And Tony, <laughs> That's Tony, Tony, don't mess t- with him. Tony would put you to sleep. And yeah, I've seen him put multiple people to sleep. I've seen him put multiple men to sleep in the same time. And so people don't fuck with someone that can whip everybody's ass usually. Because most men most no. men don't want to fight someone that can whip their ass. So You know, it's shocking to me. 
I, I'm on my, and I probably shouldn't, you know, I'm on my security team at church. Yeah. And, you know, I've said a few cuss words here, but, you know, I try to do right. But it's shocking to me at the men that's scared to be on that. Mm-hmm. We, we have some homeless people, and then we have, you know, there's some other threats in our area uh, back uh, some years back. Uh, President Obama put like three or four thousand Muslims right there in Tallahassee, which is south of us. So we've had some little issues pop up there. Uh, but it's shocking when, you know, I've, I've always been a gun guy. And I've had some CQB training and different things. I mean, no, nothing special, but it's shocking to me at the man that's scared of. Oh, there's so 100%. many of them. Yeah, I I have been in a lot of fights, but it ain't because I'm not confrontational and I won't stand up for myself. I well, I mean, you know, just like standing out front and you've got it, church starts at eleven and it's eleven twenty and you got a homeless guy walking up. Okay, yeah. well, hey, do you need food? Yeah, I tell you what, come and sit through the rest of church and I'll get you some food out of you know at the end or maybe even give you a little money. No, I don't do that. I need to talk to a preacher. Well, you're not talking to preacher. We're having church. You need to leave now. Now you yeah. need to leave. And you'll be shocked even that little bit of that little bit of confrontation and how men get scared. Like grown men. It's shocking. I'm like, what and, and the other shocking thing is they got good looking yeah. wives. And I'm like, what are you you know, you're married to a <laughs> pussy. I mean <laughs> I mean it's true. Really, it's I mean true. I mean, what what is he doing for you? He's not gonna protect right. you. I mean, obviously in today's society, a weak man can make good money. So yeah, he he's buying you a new car and he's got you a nice house. But if all hell breaks loose tomorrow, dude, the men men's gonna suck up all the oh hundred you know, percent. That and that's something that I'm gonna teach my kids as they get older. Like if you've got an ounce of a backbone and you can somewhat take care of yourself, you'll run over these kids. These kids that are coming out oh, now, God. like if you if you just have just the smallest backbone and a little bit of confidence, you'll you'll run you'll run wreck shop over everybody. Yeah, because today you can't find For redneck sure. kids no more hardly. No. When I say redneck kids, you can't find a kid that scrapped and fought. Go back and watch the uh, Bad News Bears in the seventies. Kelly, whatever his name was, had the motorcycle and smoked cigarettes at thirteen and shit. That was a normal kid. Every neighborhood had two of those, and then when I grew up, mm-hmm. you can't find one in a town of ten thousand now. Not that you need a 13-year-old kid no. smoking cigarettes and doing the shit he was doing, but just a kid that grows up with some balls on him. Well, and, what's crazy, and, men's that, and men are the same way. What's crazy about what you're saying is, like, at church, your family's going to be there. So, like, if something bad were to happen, like, it's it's one thing if you're just, you know, on your in your car and you don't want to have a gun and it's just you most of the time. But, like, you brought your wife and your kids to this establishment. And if you're not willing to stand up for their protection here, like, where are you willing to do it at? Like, cause my thinking is, is I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for them if they're in my presence at all times, whether it's at the house, yeah. the restaurant, the mall, church, they're my responsibility. 100%. How many men, I, you know, we got, we got a thousand people in our town. So let's say we have 250 grown adult men and that might be, let's say we just have a hundred grown adult men. I don't know how many we have. Out of the hundred grown men, do you can you name eight guys in Knox City that you think that would have you if something really happened that you could count on to physically help you in a situation? Because I can't. I got, I got one that's I, good. I've sat in city council meetings before over shit when I was mayor and look around the room at a bunch of pussies almost that won't even stand up to do what's right for a community. And they ain't even got to fight. They just got to stand up and face somebody face to face and tell them no to something. Right. And they fold like cards all the time. And so you can't tell me if it came down to a major confrontation, if wherever you're at, you're going to find very many grown alpha men that will take up for someone or defend a lady. Hell, you see all the time these women get beat up, everybody pulls a phone out and they're just filming shit. Yeah. And you just, yeah, no, you for just, sure. It's, and it's our whole society. It's not just, it's everywhere. I want a man that's got some dog in him, you know, that'll take up for you and help yourself. I mean, I hope my girls marry somebody like yeah. that. I mean, I don't, you know, I teach, I've got some young boys I teach uh, on Wednesday nights and they're in third grade. So they're eight, eight years old. And I mean, some of them are little boys. I mean, it's, they come in with their little knees and the jeans is wore out. And then some of them is, is pitiful. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then it's, it's really sad. And then the shocking thing is, 
with it is every I probably shouldn't say this, but I will. Everyone that's homeschooled can't read. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, what yeah. are y'all doing all day? What do you do all day? <laughs> all the little public school knuckleheads can read. You know, you put up anything you need them to read. They read it all. They can count. Yeah. You know, and then my five that are homeschooled, they can't read a lick. None of them. Yeah. And I'm like, I, and I'm reckoning I'm just throwing that out there. If your kid's staying home, you know, they're behind the curve, man. you eight, nine years old and you can't even read yet. You think a lot of that has to do with lazy ass parents? Because that's what I do. I think a lot of parents that, sco- that homeschool their kids are just lazy and don't want to get their asses out of bed. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, that, that and, you know, it's t- It's a grind on a mom. Because oh, I always say you give moms this. They're the ones doing it. They got to get these babies up. Dad may help a little. They're getting them to school. They're raising hell, giving them food, drop them off. Pick them up. Did you do your homework? Like, that's a grind. So, yeah, to say Junior can sleep to 10, get on a computer for 15 or 20 minutes, and now they're eight or nine years old and they can't read or do basic math yet. Yeah. Shout- I don't know, man. I mean- shout out to moms, though, because you're right. They have the hardest job of anyone at all. Oh, man, my wife. Dude, so the reason we're moving is my wife. I had to take my kids to school, and we we're 27 miles from their school. And I'd been fighting it because we got like this low interest rate. And I'm like, nah, I ain't giving that up. I got a 2.2% interest rate, you know, for 10 years now. Well, my fat butt had to drive them babies to school and I had to listen to them. And then I looked at the gas tank and then Nora Grace forgot her soccer cleats. And I said, well, hell, it's cheaper for me. Just go get you a cheap pair at Walmart than drive back home. Yeah. So I go get her soccer cleats and then we go to soccer. And then, well, we can't go home to eat. We had to go to Chick-fil-A. So we go by Chick-fil-A and it's 45 bucks. Because I had to get me food, them two food. <laughs> then we go to soccer, and then we get home, and it's like, well, this is asinine. It would be cheaper for us to move to town. Yeah. So we're not moving, like, in in town, but we're moving, you know, a mile. Uh, so it, it's easier. Yeah. Um, her car needs new tires. And yeah, moms, I did not realize what my wife did until that few days, and it is not worth, you know, the little bit we're losing a month in interest rate swapping houses it will be saved ten times over in fuel and sanity, food, sanity. Yeah, my uh, it's just me and Michelle at the house now, but we have the kids and grandkids come over a lot. Michelle, Andy will say this: she cooks like she's cooking for an army all the time. But I couldn't imagine doing what she does because I would say, "No, I'm not doing that." Like she made a bunch of desserts for church the other day for Easter. And she's like, I'm going to do that too. I said, you've, you've made plenty. Why don't mind us? So I wouldn't do that. She goes, well, hell no. I know you wouldn't do that. You know, I wouldn't. And there's a lot of stuff I wouldn't do, but I take for granted when I go to my house and my house is clean all the time, the laundry's always done. And when you open up that magic refrigerator, it's full of stuff all the time. And then I meet these yep. buddies of mine that their wives don't do shit. And I'm like, where'd you get your wife at <laughs> mine mine come from a different store the model i got because she cooks and cleans and took care of kids and all kinds of stuff but those yeah. moms like my wife your wife andy's wife's the same way my other daughter-in-law shelby she's the same way the, the kids in the house is a priority those are hard to come by these days but those moms right there deserve yeah. a special award because they do so much sure. i didn't re- i mean man now you know and that's that's the way i think god made it it's men be the protector provider and you know and it, it's not a, a lesser job to be take those kids to school like that's know. just as important as, as everything else but society's got that flip-flop or, or try to do away with one or the other we, and, we need more house moms yeah so what's wrong with our society one of them i think that's one of the big downfalls of our society is these a lot of these kids come home and there's nobody there and there's no structure and you know mom and dad come home at 5 30 or 6 and they're tired and they don't want to hear the kids bullshit so put an iphone put an ipad in their face keep That's them quiet of that. that and too you know like people like us giving back to kids yeah. too like that's one reason i do that on wednesday nights uh here at my business i got some high school guys and older a little older not that they need it but just i'm 41 and i've got some life experience yeah i don't mind i i give like i try to give in to my employees my younger ones and you know what i mean invest financially not only their paycheck but other things if they need it but advice and i mean we just 
all across America. I travel. I do shows. I got I know people all over the country from the richest to the poorest. But it's mentorship and uh, the the downfall of families is probably the worst I've seen it in my life. Uh, but yeah, just you know. It's kind of sad. Kids don't know any better. Kids are only going to do what they're taught and they're shown. Like, that's it. Kid, a kid right. is a blank slate. You're going to get out of it what you pour into it. And a lot of people talk shit about Deion Sanders. And I'm not, you know, I'm just picking him because I've seen all, he he puts more stuff out there that I see. But I think Dion talks to these kids that come off of the street and he can relate to them. And he can show them that there is... There is a way of doing things. I saw a video today where the locker room was a mess and they had people coming in there that were not a part of the team. He lit into the whole team's ass. He's like, y'all are a team. I don't, I know who did this, but he said, well, everybody's going to pay for it today. Dion I, has I a talk way of theory. talking to these kids and like, no, that's not acceptable. I realize you might've come from a house that, that this was acceptable, leaving your dirty drawers around, he said, but not now. It's not how we're doing yeah, it I'm anymore. It's like pee on a toilet seat for me. Right. If I know somebody pee on a toilet seat and they work for me, that's if you will pee, leave pee on a toilet seat. You'll cut a lot of other. You corners. don't need to be around here long. Yeah, yeah. Like what what, if, they, what if they wipe it up after they pee on the toilet seat? Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't know, okay. but uh, you sound like I wouldn't know. Then, you sound like my wife. I go in the head. If I go in the head after somebody and they there's pee on it twice, and we got, I'm gonna we going <laughs> hey. They gonna have to be kicking. Are you too damn lazy? Yeah, you know old men that wear slip on They're, shoes may dribble. Right, they dribble. I, you I, know, they I got, got an excuse. My my dribbles. I at least wipe the seat off. <laughs> Michelle will get on to me. That's why he pees outside. Now I pee outside the all the freaking time. Man, I don't care if it's snowing. I'll go outside and pee. Then I get in trouble for peeing in the same spot in the yard. You're killing the grass. So I move somewhere. Smells else. like ammonia. But because I, I got the dribbles and I don't want to have to. I'd just rather pee outside. It's it's just worth the battle. Even at night. I got it peed the other night at 2.30 in the morning, went outside and peed and stiff. Walked right by the bathroom, out the back door, took a leak, looked at the stars, went back inside. It was what nice my youngest does, he'll walk past his bathroom, come out our door to the backyard, take a piss, and then get in bed with us. I, I get up at uh, 0400 I have for years, and I, uh, I'll i go. So we moved in this house that we're moving from uh, 13 years ago, I think, 11 to 13 years ago. Anyway. So I, we're new there. There's a neighbor next door, but it's kind of out in the country, too. I go out on the back porch, and I'm peeing off the back porch at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, there ain't nobody outside off the deck mm -hmm. doing painting snow angels <laughs> in the grass. <laughs> Look over there to my right, and my neighbor is a Jamaican lady. She's walking her dog. Oh, no. And uh, so I get home from work that day and I go over and knock on her door and I'm, her husband comes to the door. I was like, hey, I just want to apologize. You know, she was like, baby, I got four boys. You ain't showed me nothing. <laughs> if anything, oh. you embarrassed yourself a little bit. Yeah, I wasn't impressed by that at all anyway, so don't worry about it. You know, y'all talking about, better. I saw Nick Saban did a quote a minute ago. Derek Henry said something Dick, Nick Saban said. Yeah. He told the guys he, about celebration, Alabama celebr in, in touchdown. Did you see that? Yeah. Don't be praising God in your your touchdown celebration and then staying up till midnight drinking beer and smoking black and milds. So don't pretend you're somebody you're not. Yeah. It, you yeah. know, and I'm sure most college coaches put a lot into their kids, and I was just using Dion for an example because he catches a lot of flack from a lot of people. Maybe he's a good coach, maybe he's not, but I think he's a genuine uh, good human being that wants the wants to see his kids that are in his program succeed past, I think, I think you're past right. Colorado think, or wherever he's at. I think Dion's good for those kids because a lot of those kids, let's be honest, don't have a father figure, Yeah, and he's stepping up as a father figure and teaching them right for wrong, and picking up your dirty drawers is one of them. Yeah. No, doing good deal. Yep. So, sure. um, if people want to get a hold of you, they want a belt. You got all sorts of stuff. I mean, I'm on your Instagram right now. You got bags, shirts. Uh, yeah. Hey, dude. We just got, we got jeans coming, man. We're getting into clothes for our storefront. Our, our man, we got a lot of stuff that we just hadn't put on our website. But our website is bullandbriarleatherllc.com. Um, but we've got we've getting our own polo. So like a lot of people just like go to the market. And yeah. Get their embroidered. No, we went to the we got our own cut. Like the stuff we do not make in house, we have it is ours. Like it's not, it's our own print. Like this is one of ours. 
it's not i put a wood duck on it i've got some pointer bird dogs uh just this with our logo but it's our material everything so we've got shirts pants and we make you know like i said 90 percent of the stuff we're making right here in this shop that you can see behind us so but yeah go on there they can message us we the only thing with us is we make this stuff like it's 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 one of a kind like you're not gonna get one of two of our belts right um so like if we if we if you buy 36 you need a 38 it may we may have to make it so it's uh it's kind of like a buddy of mine bought into russell boot company um it's kind of like that it takes time but it, it, the good thing is is we stand behind it and if you ever have any issues we'll fix it we can make it shorter we make it longer uh you know we're we're and it's as you've seen behind us some um, my guys are back there working now um you know we've got i think 12 12 people now some part-time in there but yeah we, we're making it all and then our shirts if you order one of our shirts it's our cut it didn't it didn't some crap we just went off right yep so, so market and bought. where uh, don't, what, don't go to facebook and buy a rollback shirt go to bull and briar and buy a, good, a, a shirt where uh yeah. what's the next show you're going to be at so we're we're we took the summer shows off uh we do some local art shows um we'll do our show lineup for this year will be uh we'll do ag show in texas i mean here in moultrie it's uh sunbelt ag expo then we'll do uh art show here in thomasville thomasville art show and then we'll do another art show in moultrie we do really well art shows it's higher in yeah like paintings um we'll take our alligator duffels and stuff and then we'll do um our next big show we're, we're planning on going to wisa which is a wholesale show in dallas uh this fall uh so we'll do wisa and then the only other real big show we do is nwtf um we did it a biologist there hooked me up uh, it was really hard to get in for us yeah um but we got in and a great show so we'll be back there and then um you know, mainly just locally. People that know the as our brand's grown, they just reach out to us, man. We we stay busy. Um, we have dips like any business, yeah. but man, God blessed us. Awesome. I mean, we've grown, uh, but we plan on being in a store close to everybody in the next two years, like even in Texas, uh, Oklahoma. Like we plan on growing big time. Well, we, We're brick and mortar. Well, we appreciate you being on. I think brick and mortar. I think it's making a comeback. Brick and mortar is making a comeback. I'm calling. I it. think so. I hope so. I'd rather go shop than do online crap. Yeah, people want that personal connection. Well, we appreciate you being on here and telling your story, and we wish you the best. And people need to look up. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it again. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll come out. I'll bring some of my guys. We'll come hunting. We'd, love to, we'd love to have you we'll out. Do some we're, big, we're big hunters, man. Big. We'd love to have you out. So if you call and we ain't asking, go shop, maybe hunt. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, God bless you, my friend. You have a great day. Y'all enjoy spring break down there in yeah, Florida. Fun. Watch the sharks. You too, man. See y'all. Bye. 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 Interesting guy. Good guy. Really good guy. Chasing, good company. Has chasing gr- the American dream and yeah. it's growing and brick made, and mortar and made me a nice, nice, nice uh, money clip that I used. Uh, big trade in the NFL, Mingo. Uh oh. Stefan Diggs. Guess where he went to? Give me a second. Tennessee. Nope. Well, that would have Jesus Christ me outfitter. I mean, what receivers are they going to have? They've got who else they have? They got Calvin Ridley and oh, DeAndre I forget, Hopkins. I forget. Um, hold on, hold okay. on, hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. Stefan Diggs went to. You'll never guess it because you would never think that they would do this. AFC or NFC? I, I'm not going to tell you that. You we'll just, just cut it in half. I mean, that's half the league. AFC. AFC. Okay. 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 Kansas City Chiefs. No. Uh, I give up. Houston Texans. They got Nico Collins, Tank Dale, mm-hmm. him. Uh, they signed who's the running back they signed too? Mixon, isn't it? Yeah, Joe Mixon. They got I'm a good. You, they got a good they got, they've team. got good defense. They've picked up that Denell Hunter, who's probably the best free agent pickup that defensive end. They, I worry they're, they're, about they're a top four team in the AFC this year. I worry about him with a young quarterback though. Yeah, because he's a dick. He's. I think yeah. I think you need a strong quarterback. Yeah, to, I don't think that was a good move for C.J. Stroud. It, but it was be. a good move for the Houston yeah, Texans. I mean, if he'll just keep his mouth shut and you know, be a mentor for these young guys, that could be a very very good connection. Second round draft pick. Cowboy fans are bitching, but the Cowboy fans don't understand. They ain't got no money. Right. C.J. Stroud's a rookie quarterback. They're on a rookie contract. That's right. 
Dak Prescott's going to make $55 million a year. The Houston Texans have five years to get this done in. Three. Three? You got four years. Well, actually five years. You got five years before because they can pick up that fifth-year option on it's him. It's the same as... They got four more years. It's the same as the Seahawks. Whenever they yep. were so good, Russell Wilson was on his rookie contract. Yep. You're going to have to pay CJ. If he if he has another year like he had this year, if he has he's, two more years like this, he's going to be the highest paid player in, in, three, in three or four years. You got four years to do this in yep. where you can bring in talent and build around them. And and they only gave up a second round draft pick for uh, next year. Wow. So they give now Josh Allen. Lost Josh Allen. You lost Stefan Diggs and Gabe Davis. The state of New York's got three football teams, and two of them have no wide receivers. The Giants don't have no wide receivers, and the Bills don't have wide receivers now. Yeah. I mean, they got Curtis Samuel, I think, now, and whoever they got. They said they traded for a, someone else to be the second pick. This, I can't remember who it was. But I believe this draft has a lot of receivers coming tons, out in it. So tons of receivers. I, I guess they're – Same as – San Diego got rid of all their receivers, yeah. but they're looking at getting Marvin Harrison or the kid from LSU. That yeah, neighbors they're kid. like pick five, aren't they? Yeah, yeah pick five. Here's what's going to happen. They got pick five. The Giants got pick six. The two wide receivers, the top two receivers are going to go to them first two teams. Right. The Giants aren't going to take a quarterback to the second round. Right. You know, Michael Penix ran a 4 four forty. He'd be damn sure who I'd be in the second round if he's still there, if I was the Giants. Think he goes to the second? I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's only so many teams that are going to take first-round quarterbacks. <laughs> I mean, I saw where uh, Bo Nix was going to be the Denver Broncos were going to take him at pick 17 on a new mock. I don't think that happens, but it could. Let's look this up. I mean, they're talking quarterbacks the first four spots. So if you get the second round, you know them first four teams ain't taking a quarterback. Who do we trust here? Do we trust? Copper's probably the best, or Mayock. Does Mayock still do them? I don't know if he is or not. I don't even know if he's alive still. Here's Yates. ESPN. Here's his mock for the first two rounds. If you trust ESPN. If you trust ESPN. All right, this is just the first one. Did you see one, her Sage so. Steele come out today? Did you see her on Joe Rogan or wherever she was on? No. She said that her dra- her interview with Joe Biden was completely all written. She could not go off key. She couldn't ask him. They couldn't even see him. Hmm. She said, I felt so bad. She goes, I felt like I was talking to a guy at a nursing home. Really? Yep. It's going to yeah. be all quarterbacks in the first four spots. Jaden Daniels. Caleb Jaden, the, the second pick to Washington, nobody knows for sure. This is Drake another May. bust right yep. here. Drake May, I think so too. I think he's you're going to New England is not getting a quarterback right here. No, that's that's it's a terrible pick. JJ McCarthy, okay, okay. and the, then Marvin Harrison. They say McCarthy's the best quarterback in NFL ready. I've heard that for that. many times. They said they, you're coming from the Harbaugh system. Yep, they said he is ready to go because he doesn't just have a one hot read. He's he knows how to check down and do everything. So, anyways, yeah, your quarterback's the first four picks. And then you got Marvin Harrison going to San Diego, and then you're going to have the neighbor's kid going to New York. And then after that, it's going to be – but look at the next quarterback. Got to be Penix, right? No, he's not even a first-round dra- dra- grade. This is not, not even have a quarterback, another quarterback taken. There he is, Penix, Michael Penix at 24. the Raiders. Okay. And then Bo Nix is going to be left then. That's it. Hmm. Now, can you imagine if the Chiefs get Brock Bowers? They got Travis Kelsey's replacement. That's crazy because Kelsey's probably only got a year or two left anyways. Yeah. But uh, on that right there, you got Bo Nix in the second round. And the Giants can grab him in the second round. I think if you get Bo Nix in the second round, you're not getting no different than you would if you took Drake May. Right. And huh. you can use it to get that receiver in the first round. But it's going to be crazy. And if it's, I'm ready for the draft to get here. I'm ready for football stuff to start. I can find Mayock, and his might not be available for my consumption, or it might just be the first round. What the fuck? When was this from? Matt Ryan. Well, did he get that right? Uh. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's going to be interesting to see. So, anyways, that's where we're at right we now. Go. No, that's 2017. Mayock must not put anything out. Anymore. No, I forgot. He went to work for the Raiders, didn't he? Wasn't he their GM for a little bit? Who am I thinking? I'm thinking of the guy with the good hair. Uh, Barry? No, that's that's a fantasy. The guy, guy that works for uh, ESPN. I thought it was Mayock. It's not Mayock because he was a general manager. Um, what's the fucking guy? Yeah, I think you said his name. Corso? No, no. not Corso. Uh, Kuiper. Kuiper. Mel Kuiper. Kuiper is who I meant to yeah. type in, not, not Mayock. Good hair. He's got car salesman hair. It's good hair. He's got good hair. 
All right, let's see. Do, do, do. He's, oh, you got anything on ESPN, you got to fucking pay to read. I'm not doing it. I fuck them Draw the line. Draw the line, Disney. Not doing it. All right. We got anything else? Nope, that's it. I ain't got nothing else. There was something else I saw today I was going to talk about, and I can't remember what the hell it was. It was a kind of an interesting deal. Something on taxes or something. I don't, I don't remember. Just My TikTok is nothing but interesting. There, there's a guy that I follow. Roy Casagranda, I believe is his name. I was showing you a video earlier, and you got real rude with me. Um, real interesting stuff about... So, here, we'll just play one video, and then we'll get out of here. Um, did you know that the British left... The reason that the American Revolution ended was because the British realized that our soil was infertile. Mm -hmm. They said, fuck it, we're out of here. No, by the, that's bullshit. By the time the American Revolution rolled around, I'll play the video. This guy's a doctor. He knows what he's talking about. By the so, by the time, I know some fucking sorry-ass doctors. By the time the American Revolution rolled around, the British realized that all of that area, Maryland, Virginia, that whole area, that they had... Not good. Uh, science went into the growing of the crops, and the, the ground was ruined. By the time the American Revolution... So the eastern shore of Maryland, some of the best soil in the country, wasn't it good enough for them? Nope. By the time the American Revolution mm. rolled around, Virginia and Maryland were importing their tobacco from southern states. They couldn't grow it. So they left there knowing they could get it from the southern states, but they didn't want to fight for that. Well, the way that the, uh, the Treaty of Paris... I'm trying to find the video. I'm pretty sure I pinned it. When the... Uh, when the Treaty of Paris was signed, um, basically, um, Europe was still getting money from us. So there was no financial. They got their ass whooped is why they left. If they wouldn't have got their ass whooped, they would have still been here. Oh, that's not it. That's how the government creates uh, inflation to put people out of work. Now, they did do... A budget, big investment at, at uh, Plymouth because they thought that we could get beaver pelts and furs because the Dutch were in New York and the French were in Montreal. What now? The, 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 the Plymouth colony was one of the things they wanted to set it up with was that they were going to get a bunch of furs, beaver pelts, and bring back. The, Aunt New York, the, Aunt, the Dutch were in New York City. That's where they had settled. The French were in Montreal. Here it is, I think. Oop. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Virginia had to import tobacco by the time of the revolution. Actually, by 1754, Virginia was already importing tobacco. So the English were no longer making money off the southern colonies, not the way they wanted to. What they realized in 1781 was if they surrendered to us, effectively the British Empire cut itself in half by land not population, right? But in terms of square kilometers, they basically chopped the British Empire in half. It'll, it freed the British Empire to become the good guy in people's minds. They would do things like pursue the abolition of slavery. But in the meantime, it would allow us to keep slavery, terminate the relationship with the Native Americans, genocide them, steal their land, bring slavery there, and then grow tobacco and cotton on that soil. The surrender treaty that the British signed with us, the Treaty of Paris, 1783, specifically allowed the British to, to stay economically in the United States. So for all intents and purposes, the United States remained part of the British Empire economically. There you go. Yeah, yeah fuck them. Yeah. It's only history. No, it's interesting. I just never heard it put quite them terms, but that's not the reason they left. They got their ass whooped. <laughs> no, they, they were winning the war, he said. Well, I guess they didn't tell the people there. They were, I mean, they had everything going. They were winning the war. They, no, they, they had a They had a leg up. No. They, didn't, they would not have left. They would have loved to have whipped our ass and kept us under their thumb, but they couldn't keep us under their thumb. They could keep us here, but not under their thumb. They didn't like that. So Not according to this guy. Well, that guy can go back to England. <laughs> he's a Viking. He's a uh, he's a Swede or not a Swede, but he's got Viking blood in him. Oh well, that that answers that then. Yeah, Vikings are a bunch of pussies. No, that they weren't that. But we know that. But the uh, 
all them people in the Dutch, all them, them, them countries up there, mm -hmm. they rely on someone else to protect them. Mm. And they have forever. Right. Whether it was the Germans, us, the French, the English, or somebody else. Did you see Harbaugh's, Jim Harbaugh's rules for uh, being a, a good person? No. Card that he gave me today. Jim Harbaugh's rules to live by. <laughs> Seek first the kingdom of God, and all else will be added unto you. Attack <laughs> each day with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. That's a Papa Harbaugh. Who could possibly have it better than you? You. No <laughs> body. <laughs> Learn the damn rules. We got it better than us. No Better today than yesterday, better tomorrow than today. Heroes have no days off. Your fate is in your hands. Think, innovate, find solutions. By your talent and effort, you will be known. Choose a great role model. Watch them, emulate them, then make them proud. Mort, love more. a smile being pleasant is a small price to pay for the goodwill and affection of others. Bring good energy. Discipline yourself daily to be physically fit for life. I gotta get better at that. Great effort equals great results. Stop trying to win all your fights in the first round. Oh. Never been that's a good way to phrase patience. <laughs> what we do in life echoes in eternity. Seek long and trusting friendships by being happy and helpful for the other guy's success. That's right. Yeah, love that. Be Don't happy be for it. Who's that? Roger Goodell. Who is that? Keep reading the rules. The best customer is a satisfied one. The only job you start at the top is digging a hole. Treat others as you would want to be treated. Here's advice. ABCs for picking a school, academics, ball, college environment. Three keys to happiness in descending order. Three, pick a job you love. Two, outwork your competition. Number one, marry wisely. Marry wisely. You got to marry wisely. That's what I took from it. And the only job you start out at the top is digging a hole. Yep, pretty interesting facts. Very um, successful man. I can't, I don't know if I trust him though. Jim Harbaugh? Yeah. He's a salesman. He's a coach. I, I don't know. I will say this. Like, I don't, like, I'm telling you, I don't know. I think I'm, I think I get bamboozled by the charm of Deion Sanders because I see his videos on here and I think, oh, you know, he's a good guy. But I don't know if you just, Jim Harbaugh's a better coach. But I don't know if Jim Harbaugh's not marketing himself that way. Well, sure he is, but he is successful everywhere he's been. I'm not, I'm not taking that away from him, but he I left just, the school ah, with the best helmets in football. Just kind of seems like a dick a little bit. Well, most winners are. But Dion doesn't seem like a dick. He just wants you to clean up after yourself. Yeah, he's got a lot of dick in him too. Think so? Yeah, of course he does. Um, well, you have to at that level. Do you? Uh, can you name a better football helmet than Michigan's? Yeah. Huh? No, they're, those helmets are badass. The Longhorns, the Raiders. Um, no. Do you know the Longhorns the most iconic cat helmet? Well, yeah, they say? it's fucking simple. Yep, I like I like Michigan's helmets. I think George, cool. uh, Alabama, Alabama's got a better helmet. No, 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 no. The Titans had that. Remember the Titans had the same helmet as, as Bama. Of course, it's better. No, I like Michigan's helmet, and well, I'm not that, a Michigan guy. Well, that's fine, but it's not the best helmet in college football. I think not is. by a long shot. I think it is. I would put Texas over them. I would put Bama over them. I like when Texas Tech does their old school throwbacks. I like those better. My favorite Texas Tech deal is the state of Texas on their helmet. I think that's a badass helmet. They should wear that all the time. Yeah, it's cool. Texas pride. That's I just, really pretty I cool. just like the uh, throwback look that they do. Throwback. I can't spell today. Still can't spell. Maybe it'll fix it. That one. That white one. See, I don't like it that much. I like that one, and I, I, like, the I, like, one. I like the black one next to it. I like both of those. I think the Tex I think Texas and Oklahoma leaving the Big Twelve is really good for Texas Tech. Hell yeah, baby. I really did. Texas get, get Tech the, get the get Oklahoma the two top State. dogs out of the way. Yeah. Well, Make a run at things. Can't beat them, kick them out. Hell yeah. It's Just like, wait like, for them to leave. Yeah. But I think I think it's really good for Tech and to Oklahoma State. I think they're gonna be big benefactors of this. I just hope one of these schools like BYU don't come in and win it every year. Or Arizona. Yeah, that would suck. So I'm hoping it's have it be yours, and then like these outsiders come and start dominating. Fuck, that's probably what's going to happen. That's I hope that doesn't happen. Be interesting. I'm ready for football season to start. That's, that's what my money's on. Just as being like watching Texas Tech for my whole life, like you just kind of know somebody's going to come in and just steal your thunder. They have an opportunity. They got a good coach. Football's so different now because this transfer portal has just completely changed. I mean, you're running off great coaches. Just don't want to put up with this shit. And I don't I, feel bad at all for Saban. I really don't. He's wow. had the pick of the litter forever, and now the rules have changed to where he's not going to be able to run rough shot over everybody. And he says, "Fuck it, I'm so, taking my, I'm taking my, I'm taking my car and going home." So we're not rewarding people that have worked hard to build programs, because that's what he did. Alabama had down years when he got there at first, and he turned them around and made them the culture of winning and being able to recruit. And him and Clemson and the guys that did it the right time way, Ohio State now are having to do deal with schools that are have second-tier programs, but now are being able to buy players every year to keep to make themselves relevant. And they're playing by the rules that we have now. They're not breaking rules. But this is how you build a program now. And he didn't want to. It's not it. building a program, though. 
I don't think you're building a program these you're days. You're building a program for that year. You you have yes, to, I think you have year. to you have to shorten your time frame. Yes. You're not saying that I'm building a program that's going to be good for 10 years. It's going to be one year. Let's go all in right now. Yeah, you're all in on one year and that's it. And I just I don't think it's good for the culture of that, but I don't I don't know. I mean, I I don't have an answer for it. I don't think nobody does. Now they're wanting to put a cap on these deals. Why are you going to have a cap? If those kids are deal to make all the money they make, it ought to be just free for all. You know? I don't know. Kind of like Clayton Clark. I don't know why she would leave Iowa to go fucking play in the WNBA. I think she can make a whole lot more money playing at Iowa. And there's nothing to prove by winning a WNBA title because nobody gives a shit. Right. I mean, who won the WNBA last year? I'm just going to say Brittany Griner. I don't even know. But what team? I don't know. The... I know who won it the girls the year before because LSU beat Iowa last year. The year before that, I couldn't tell you. It was Baylor, South Carolina, or one of them schools, Connecticut. But nobody knows. The Vegas Vixens, I'm going to say. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. But I don't care. I can't even tell you who won the WM, the NBA championship last year. Was it uh, Denver, It was Denver won last year. But I don't care. I'm not going to watch none of it. I'm going to miss LeBron James because if I do watch basketball, I want to see him get beat. So I always go against him. I need a, I need a big I need a, a bad person a villain in everything I watch. Right. Sprint car racing is not no fun no more because I hated Brad Sweet and I was always against him. Well, now he don't race the outlaws all the time, so I have not gotten into it as much this year because I can't. I'd watch every week to hope he would wreck or get beat. Motherfucker, Vegas did win it. I was just throwing that out there. There you go. What's their name though? I don't know. Surely it's not the Vixens. Oh, Aces. But the Vegas Aces back to back, baby. Twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three, a fucking dynasty in Vegas. I'll give you a million dollars if you can tell me one player on their team. Oh, does Brittany <laughs> Griner not play for him? No, she signed with Phoenix the other day. For she, but, but I mean, that's what I mean. Nobody knows. You know. Hmm. But to be all, all to be fair, I couldn't name you two players on the Denver Nuggets that won the the NBA championship. There's a, the big white guy, Jokic. He plays for them? Yeah, and then I think uh I think a Murray or somebody plays for him. But I don't I don't know. I don't I don't watch basketball. Steph Murray. No, it's not Steph. I can't remember his name. But that's that's what I'm saying. I don't I don't, I don't know. So I don't I hope I hope I hope Angel Reese comes back and I hope Caitlin Clark comes back. I do back. too. I think it'd be good for the, the I saw zero minutes of either one on play, so I'm really talking out of my ass. But I know a lot <laughs> of people are excited and I'm excited when people are excited, so I hope that they come back. And I hope that college basketball is worth watching next next year. College basketball. Just, just for these people. Girls basketball it. needs Kim Mulkey and the villains. And then they need the, 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 the I don't even know what it would say, the shining armor, the all-American Bruce Jenner. You got to have the, the yin and yang. Yes. You got to have a villain. You got to have somebody to root against. Yes, and that's why... The evil empire. That's why I like sports when I have somebody I can... I said, the Dallas Cowboys are the evil empire to me, so I love to watch the Cowboys because I go against them. And baseball, there was people that hated the New York Yankees. I hate the L.A. Dodgers. I don't even know why. What's going to be interesting is if Caitlin Clark has like that Tom Brady syndrome where she gets too successful and people start rooting against oh, her. Oh, that always happens. Tiger Woods, same way. Right. Everybody loved Tiger. Everybody hated Tiger. Now everybody loves Tiger loves again. But is she next year if she comes back to the WNBA? Is she gonna be? She gonna start to kind of be that that good person that went bad? Could be. Yeah, everybody loved Tom Brady up until about year twelve. Patrick Mahomes is going through that now. He's gonna. He's gonna. If he wins a couple more, like I think if he wins, I don't think he's there yet. But I think if he wins one more and like another MVP, people are gonna be like, "When's this motherfucker gonna fall on his face?" I can't cheer for him no more. But God, I respect the shit out of him. He's Best. so good. And he seems like a good dude, but I just I'm tired of that whole. It's any debate. Once somebody wins and wins and wins and wins, you get really sick of it. But well, you I think I think that's just humankind. You like you just start you start rooting for the underdog. More. Yeah, like this, when Patrick um, Mahomes, like I guarantee you, if you took a poll outside of New England, most people that first time that they played Brady and Mahomes, people were probably rooting for Mahomes because they were sick of Brady. Winning. Yes, but now if that game's played again, if Brady comes back, everybody's gonna be rooting for Brady. Who, um. I think that Patrick Mahomes is the greatest quarterback to play the game ever. I've gotten him up there. I got him up there with Brady or above Brady now. And I think that he will win another Super Bowl or two. And I wouldn't be surprised they won the Super Bowl next year. No. If I was having to bet money, if you told me I, you have to bet both your kidneys on somebody to win the Super Bowl next year, I would probably go with Kansas City. 
I really would. Buffalo now is done. I think they've yeah. lost too many. They've lost too many players. They need to rebuild. I think Josh Allen's in his prime still. That's what sucks. And you, you got that window's just really close on it. And I think he'll still be really good next year. They got to go get some receivers. Is all they need to do. But uh, Houston looks like they they might be the new team coming up. But we've seen a lot of teams like that that fizzle out too. Buffalo. Yeah, exactly. And um, Jacksonville looked like they would. They didn't even make the playoffs last year. So, who knows? Uh, San Francisco is going to be really good. Mm, 49ers Niners are the Niners are the top dog in the NFC. Chiefs are the top dog in the AFC. Yeah, Ravens, Bills, Lions, this Cowboys, must be an Texans. Old thing. That, can't, that can't be. That had to be just in the last oh, two okay. weeks. Uh, February 9th. Yeah. No, that's that's when they took that. They said that was going to take place. but That can't be current odds. Odds as of April 2nd. What? I bet the trade the trade just happened, right? Yeah, today. So that so. was in there. So that they would fall again a little bit. And the Texans would move up probably. Texans are already pretty high. I can't believe Cowboys are I just I don't I don't understand the love affair with Dallas every year a Super Bowl team when they can't even win a playoff game. Every single year it's the same way. This is good odds right here for the Chargers. If you back if you're a Harbaugh fan, I think I'm in the Super Bowl next year. You got no receivers. It's a good draft, Jeff. It's a it good is. draft. I damn sure wouldn't put the Bears above him. No. With a rookie quarterback? No way. Now, he's going into a good situation, though. If I was betting on any of those teams as Texans. a long shot team, no. What's your long shot My team? My long shot team would be the Packers. What about the Falcons? No, the Packers no. and the Dolphins would be my long shot team because if the Dolphins could stay healthy and get all their playoff games at home, that's 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 their advantage, right? That's so that's that would be my two teams. What that about I was the Bucks? Thinking. No, you don't like no. the Bucks? No, not even close. Resign Mike Will Mike Evans, Baker Mayfield, another year. Nope, that would be my long shot team. Steelers? What about the Steelers? Nope, not them either. Not huh? Russell Wilson, he's done. We well, got Justin Fields. You got done. two, two for one. Can't throw the ball. Run the ball. Well, it's not very long. That would be my shots. long shot teams. The Browns, I really like the Browns because they have a really good defense. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to Deshaun Watson. It's either the worst contract ever in the history of football or he'd turn it around this year. No, no, There's no in-betweens there. All right, let's get off here. Thank you all y'all right. for listening to us. God bless y'all. Have a great week. Love you. Bye. Watch for deer. Go check out our sponsors. Go check out MLR Graphics. Baseball season's here. Even, even if you just need shirts, regular shirts, MLR Graphic, contact them. Boss Shop Shelves, Pacific Calls, uh, BHP 25, Dive Bomb Industry, Dirty Duck Coffee, Shin Gear, Looking Glass Podcast, Lucky Duck, Ducks Unlimited, Double T British Kennels, Mossberg, Mallard Bay, Stanford Outfitters, Outdoor Specialties, and Hemphill Farm. Just send us some CBD. BHP's promo code there. <laughs>